Hi there, my name is FixFox and welcome to Heroes of Might and Magic 2. This is the F Heroes edition. Today we are on to the third scenario in the Wizard's Isle campaign. This is Power's End. Now, of course, we do have the opportunity. We could go for either Scenario 3 or Scenario 4, but as you know, here we do every single episode, every single scenario that we can possibly get our hands on. And so for today, we're going to do Scenario 3, Power's End, instead of jumping straight on to the Fount of Wizardry. Let's view the intro and dive right in. With the library now yours to study, the location of the Fount of Wizardry has been revealed to you. Unfortunately, it has already been claimed by one of your rivals. Without the knowledge in the library of Kronos, it may be some time before they can control its power. But once they do, they will be unstoppable. However, the existence of an artifact of great potency has also been revealed by the library. This artifact has the power to completely nullify all magic in its presence. A most effective weapon against a rival Archmage. You know, I gotta tell you, the whole premise for what we just heard is kind of silly, kind of funny in this sense. Let's just say that there was some mystical way that I could learn how to be the best swordsman. I could be the greatest swords saint ever, the greatest Kensai. And yet, because my rival gets there first, I say to myself, well, fine, I'm just going to go find the thing that makes swords irrelevant. I'm just going to go get a gun. <laughs> and then I just give up and I quit. Um, that's kind of what this feels like here. If we're going to find the artifact that is going to prevent any spell casting at all, it's not a wizard's war at that point at all. We might as well just hit each other with sticks and stones. Let's read the intro here. Find the orb of negation, which is said to be buried in this land. There are clues inscribed on the stone obelisks, which will help lead you to your prize. Find the orb before the first day of the sixth month, or your rivals will surely have gotten to the fount before you. It looks like there was a little bit of a mix up there when they were putting this campaign together. The intro says that they have already gotten there. This intro says that they may get there. I, I suppose that that's more that they will learn how to use the Fount of Wizardry if you are not able to get this Orb of Negation. So find the orb. We have six months to do it. We do have Set Earth Guardian as an award here. For what reason, I do not know, but I will take whatever little bit of help I can get. We do have our choice between the Mass Haste spell on our main hero, which is a terrific spell, one of the absolute bests. Which would I rather prefer, Mass Haste or Mass Slow? I think Mass Slow, but only by a little bit, and only given the correct circumstance. Then we also have the choice between Summon Earth, Earth Elementals, automatic troops for your army. This can help you take a lot of early fights if you have the knowledge to back it up. And then Chain Lightning, everybody's absolute favorite spell in the flesh, 15 spell points, and you get to do a tremendous wallop of damage on one unit, and then that damage will spread. It's one of the best. It's my favorite of all of the AoE damaging spells. So excellent choices here all around. I'm not going to be sad for whichever one we get. Let's let the dice roll decide. What are we going to take here? The dice roll indicates to us we're going to roll a three. A three is going to be the summon earth elemental. So we are on hard difficulty. We know our heading, which is to find this orb. And folks, let's dive right in. Before questing for the orb of negation, you must first crush the local opposition. After the sorceresses are removed from the earth, go east where the legend says the orb lies. You may expect a convoy of supplies in a week or so to aid you in your conquest. That's good information to know as far as what the lay of the land is here a little bit. So there are sorceresses that we are probably going to have to deal with in this immediate vicinity. We can potentially get some supplies. What those supplies are, I do not know, and that's a little bit concerning because it's hard to really gauge what I should spend my money on and my resources if I don't know what else is coming. And then it looks like Go East is somewhere where the orb is, but that's also a little bit strange, I must say, for this reason. We are apparently smack dab in the very middle of this map, or about as smack dab as you can possibly get. Generally, you find yourself in a corner. 
somewhere and then you kind of spread that way towards the map. If we are doing a first time playthrough and we are trying to expand judiciously, if we are trying to uh, take the most key and important opportunities that are before us, kind of difficult to do that when we have 360 degrees of travel that we can go and then there's more room for a mistake. So we start off with Sarek and the wizard. He's level three. Terrific. We start off with an endless bag of gold. That's basically a gold mine, just not quite. He is a level three wizard and he has the expert wisdom and he has the basic mysticism. The mysticism is going to be nice because of this. Uh, let's see. What did we take? What was our reward? Our reward was summon earth elemental. And so the mysticism will be important because that way we don't always have to stay a night in the mage guild. We won't have to try and find uh, wells out and about on the map. But the expert wisdom kind of feels like a little bit of a loss at this point. We're glad to have it eventually, but right now we don't really have any spells to, to cast with that. I don't think we're going to have a fifth level mage guild in our town. So, But otherwise, eight halflings and four boars, four Sarek and the wizard, two, one, two, and two for our primary stats. The two attack is actually pretty nice to see. Pretty nice. As far as our starting castle goes, we do start off with the library, which is a huge barrier to getting the Arc Magi, since it is a prerequisite building after you get the Ivory Tower. That means to me that if we can find just a couple of these basic resources, um, we may be able to get the Ivory Tower and then roll right on into the Arc Magi, the upgraded version. But otherwise, we, start off, we do start off with boars. We start off with our halflings. And we do have a second level mage guild. And with the library, we have the extra blind spell and a cure. Very nice. A damaging spell. Magic arrow is not ideal to have our damaging spell there, but we will take it. And then bloodlust, stone skin, disrupting ray. All good spells, plus one way to mitigate some unfriendly spells against us the blind can be terrific it looks like there is us and two other enemies here we are dead last in everything or at least tied for dead last in everything red warlocks and orange sorceresses quite possible especially from the preamble that we got with 5,000 gold to start off with i don't know what's going to be ideal but because serikin is my primary hero, given that he is level three already. Um, we're going to wait before we make any purchases. I'm guessing we are going to have another hero though. I do see an aqua barrier here with a way to get through this stone lith. I see our sawmill immediately and some loose resources. What else is there? This observation tower will tell us much, I am sure. So there's this nifty little river that runs through it all. And this actually looks like this may kind of go into a triangle kind of like a three-way land split, continent here, continent here, continent here, perhaps. Otherwise, I see our ore mine, which will be important since there's much to build steel. Two halfling holes, that will be very nice. One windmill here, gems nearby. For a wizard, having a nearby gem mine means that I think the titans are going to come sooner rather than later. And if I'm a map designer, I do not put a gem mine close by just for fun. That means that I should be expecting a very serious fight, and those titans are going to be critically important. Shrine of the Second Circle. Maybe we get a cold ray. Maybe we get a lightning bolt. And then it looks like the first of many obelisks, knowing that we are going to have to dig for our ultimate artifact. Alchemist Lab down here. So we are still going to be missing sulfur. And we are still going to be missing our crystal. But... That's accounted for, that's accounted for. Sawmill, Alchemist Lab, Ore Mine, still missing Sulfur, still missing Crystal, and we will need our Gem Mine right here. Okay, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't uh, try and kind of grab the Sawmill, grab these Halflings, and then work our way through these Orcs as soon as possible. This is going to be a two hero map, I think, especially with the road being right here. So let me purchase that second hero now. It's gonna be Marini the Wizard. She looks like she's got the 10 halflings and the two boars. Not too bad. And then my next purchase is probably... Do I waste money on the foundry? I think so, because we already have the well and the orchard and the statue. And then that foundry purchase will still get us closer to the magi. Even though we are not planning on taking these golems on the road at all, I still think that with the 1,000 gold, we will get our halflings first and then four boars. 
and this army will travel with us. Marini does pick up these spells. She's going to go here and where she's going to transfer over all these troops. I will give her the boar so that she can transfer or she can travel just a little bit faster. And actually, I'm going to send her up this road. This road intrigues me just a little bit. Ah, look at this Freeman's Foundry. That's actually interesting with our golems that we just purchased. That might be useful. Um, how important is gold right now? Pretty important. In fact, I think that gold is more important than levels. I don't want to step on an artifact and get ambushed by rogues. I don't know what the percentage likelihood of that is, but what a bad way to start a map if that were to happen. I am going to risk it. Pendant of Life. We scour the area. We fall upon a hidden chest containing the ancient artifact Pendant of Life. So death spells we are now immune to, which is so very important for creatures that are alive. Um, and I'm going to have Marini just kind of clear him this way. Since she's on the way anyway, she'll get pretty far before any major problems come up. Did we? We did transfer over the troops. That's just all we have. It's just not that many. Unfortunately. And then with no other things to do at the moment, we are going to go on to the next day. Okay. Steam decided to update, and that was just a bad time for Steam to try and update. Darn you, Gabe. Okay. Picking up a couple of these artifacts, a quick and deadly battle with the Necromancer wins you his magical pendant. Later, a wizard tells you that the pendant protects undead under your control from holy spells. So, well, I mean, that is less likely of a useful artifact, but we will take all the artifacts we can get. Uh, we are not going to get this kinetic pendant, though. Unfortunately, it is guarded by a nearby bone dragon. Do we want to fight? Absolutely not. I don't know when we will come back for that, but for now, we are just aware that that is there. This Death Ripple spell, you know what? There is some, some weird use cases. If we have Death Ripple, knowing that we also have the Pendant of Life and the Pendant of Death here, <laughs> um, that's actually a viable spell now. It's, a, it's basically like a itty-bitty, tiny, uh, what do you call it? Elemental Storm. It's like a really, really weak Armageddon. It could be valuable. And for troops like these orcs or these centaurs that have low hit points, that little bit of damage might actually be enough to do something fun. The likelihood of that is low, but it's possible. So for that reason, we're going to try and get Sarakin and Marini in the same room together. Uh, let's see, just so we can get this Pendant of Life back to Sarakin so he can use that appropriately. No purchases to make. We're just too shy of resources. There's just too much going on at the moment. This is actually a little bit tough. I think that we're going to take the gold, unfortunately, now. Levels are good, but we started off as level three. If we were level one, I would go for the levels. Since we're level three, I think that we're going to just take the gold because we need gold so very, very bad. I don't know if we need these gems though. We have five gems. We're still looking for one sulfur and then three crystal. The likelihood of finding that one additional sulfur feels kind of low, does feel kind of low. We do see though that orange has flagged this alchemist lab. That is a little bit concerning. And there we know that they are probably in this bottom corner. I'm doubting that there's a land bridge here. And so all they have to do is go through some archers and then all of a sudden we are in for a little bit of a fight. Um, so we need to, we do need to run. There is our sulfur actually. So now I just need to find crystal. Do you see crystal? There's this trading post. That might be a good way of getting the final resources that we need. It's day three. What's the likelihood that we're able to get those? I'm not sure, but we will have to check and see. Maybe Marini's going to find something along the road here. It looks like this might be the end, though. Just off of her screen here, in the fog of war, in the uncharted territory, there is some enemy guarding the road there. So that's also worth noting. We are going to get the cliff nest. And this will give Marini time to kind of come on back and give on over that artifact. And give Serkin time to pick up the death ripple. Because I think that the Death Ripple will probably be more important than any amount of Earth Elementals, to be honest. When fighting shooters, the Earth Elementals are going to go so slowly across the battlefield, I just don't see that being useful. The rocks are such a good pickup for that exact reason. And for that exact same reason, that's why we're not going to even think about, not even going to consider bringing the boars. So, while we're in the area, we will pick up this Fairy Ring. I don't see any reason why we ought not to. This is 
rogues and it's a sulfur mine that they are kind of guarding along the road. That's pretty useful. It's pretty interesting. And one thing that I will tell you all right now that I'm not very good at that I need to be better about is trying to use what you find on the adventure map to your advantage and looking for the small ways you might get an advantage. And how do I mean that? Right now, I specifically mean this fairy ring and this idol. This is plus one luck. This is plus two luck. We could potentially go into a battle against sorceresses with plus two luck. How tremendous would that be? I don't think that that's a small thing at all. And they seem to not have a whole ton of troops here. Every little bit of luck might be critically important. We are going to pick up this plus one luck here. We are going to pick up this death ripple spell only because of the opportunities we have. And, and I'm saying to myself, you know, I want this gem mine. I want those gems. I want to get to this trading post. Is it is now the best time actually to fight Astra? Is this the strongest I may reasonably be? I don't know the answer to that. I do not know. This is this is a, a real watershed moment, and I, this Shrine of the First Circle could have potentially made some changes for me. It does not because we already have the Magic Arrow in our Mage Guild. 6,200 gold. Knowing that there is this Freeman's Foundry here. Knowing that we are close to getting Magi. We would have to go... We'd have to go from here to here in two days on the trading post. I do not think that that is likely. If it was possible, if we had not gone out of our way to pick up that spell, I think it's quite possible that we could have gotten to the trading post. I don't think it's likely at this point. And so I think that we're actually better suited to get the orcs and then to come back down through the zombies while Marini helps pick up the golems so that we can turn them into steel golems and then we can do a timing attack here on Astra. This might be a bad idea, but these archers might as well not exist. They are not big enough of a deterrent for me or for her, and so I don't feel bad about removing them as a barrier. Sometimes you'll see me not go through barriers like this, like this aqua barrier. I will leave them up because I'm more worried about the unknown that I can't see on the other side of the stone lith. In this instance, I know what the enemy is, and if they want to come through here, I can't stop them anyway. So I might as well take my time to go out of my way to attack them first. So for that reason, I'm not optimistic that we are going to get enough resources to get the ivory tower. And so I think I'm fine to pick up these iron golems and I will send Marini down with them here. They may be valuable for the zombie fight, but they're definitely not going to help us with these orcs. So let's just make sure that we have our splits correctly. We want to have three rocks. We may do this. Let's see, where is it? This death ripple spell, mm, 10 points of damage, that's one orc at a time. Uh, the blind and the magic arrow are probably going to be more useful for us in this fight. Do note, by the way, um, with our 20 spell points, with our two knowledge, we can't even cast summon earth elemental. So we need a couple of more levels to make this happen. We should win this fight. It might be costly. I have to fight this fight again, and this is why. Fox, that was a completely and totally one battle. It didn't cost you anything. Why are you fighting this again? Because I remembered at the last possible second that I had my auto spell casting on. If you have auto spell casting on, <laughs> the AI will cast spells for you and it will do a great job, obviously. And yet I need to make sure, I need to make sure that the AI doesn't use my spells when it ought not to. That's just, that's just a big deal for me. Um, yeah, big deal for me. And plus, I think that looking at this, I think we're going to have enough uh, troops. I think we're going to do enough damage. I don't think that there's going to be any problem defeating these orcs. So the 48 halflings are really going to provide so much artillery and doing half damage. These orcs should not be too big of a problem. There goes one whole stack. And then our lowest rock is 33, 25 hit points. And so for that reason, the boars are going to go help out this rock as opposed to any of the others. But good morale coming through. We do have the good luck modifiers we'd already mentioned, but I'm not anticipating that we're going to see that anytime soon. We're going to keep attacking this bottom orc. This orc is going to get destroyed by these halflings. 
And from here, I, I want to hit Q, but I want to make sure that nothing crazy happens. I'm, I'm a, like, what if for some reason this uh, didn't register until the next fight or something? I don't think that that's the case, but all the same. Um, interesting point that I want to bring up. Uh, recently, it's a little bit of a of a of a well, it's a video I've done a, a minute ago, ranking the secondary skills. Someone did a great job. Give me just half a second. I want to figure out who this was. Uh, someone did a great job of discussing and, and arguing. I encourage you on my videos to argue for or against any of the decisions that I make. And that just feels the most correct thing to do. Um, I don't want you just to say, oh, you're wrong because of this. You know, explain your thinking, explain your reasoning. And someone did a great job in explaining why they thought that estates should be uh, a higher tier. I don't necessarily believe that it should... Uh, always be s tier per se but this was the argument that was made by uh oh that's not really a name it's just a whole ton of letters 1786 istvan metal okay sorry i am so sorry but what they indicated was this estates should be s tier in my opinion because war is usually decided by resources if you have more gold than your opponent then you can get better map control by being able to hire more units from different towns and then spread these across heroes and I absolutely agree with that. Uh, that concept is is critically important. Um, when I discussed my secondary skills ranking video, I think that I, I mentioned that estates is one of those did not get the S tier spot simply because I was trying to be more um, exclusive. And also, there are times where I don't necessarily want to see estates. Say on my primary hero, I'm trying to build the perfect hero. Do you really want estates as a non-combat stat on your main hero? In this case, I do, because it's month one, week one, day six, and they made a great argument. You leverage gold, gold turns into troops, and that turns into a combat advantage, especially when I'm the Warlocks, who are the most expensive faction in the game. We're taking estates, even though I would like that choice for mysticism there. Truly, truly. Um, I think it's day six. I want to get back. I'm assuming that there's a castle right here. I'm assuming that Astra is going to pick up some of this stuff. Maybe even if she did not get the witch doctor's hut, maybe she'll do that first. I want this gem mine now, but I also want to make sure I can get back and maybe meet her at her town before she's able to resupply. I think I'm going to have the stronger army. It pains me to not get these gems right now, but I think I've got to be on the road. I do. I absolutely do. I will clear out the zombies because they are so very, very much on my way. But really, that's the only reason why I'm going to clean them up is because they're on the way. And then that means that a secondary hero can just waltz in and take that ore mine. And that's going to be pretty darn important for me. I'm not too sure why I lost a rock here. I'm guessing that the rocks were very impetuous. They did not go into a defensive position. That they were uh, inviting disaster upon themselves by flying into the teeth of the enemy's defense. And so we will ensure that there is no problems there, knowing that there is no possible chance at good morale. Even though there is a captain unit and there are these zombie units, we are going to stay back. Now I'm going to hit Q. There's no way we can make any losses happen there. When I hit Q, by the way, that just is the auto battle finisher. It will finish the battle from whatever point you're currently at. It's day six. We don't have to make a decision about this ivory tower just yet. I am cooking up an idea, though. I am cooking up an idea where we may end up, hmm, interesting, we may end up trading for the crystal necessary. It'll be incredibly expensive, but it could be worth it. I don't think I need the ore mine right now, and I don't think I need the actual raw resources. It's five of each. I'll just need three crystal. Let's just make that decision now before we do anything else, because there's no other resources we can really get. Uh, there's no way. Never mind. Never mind. Our ratio for trading is is 20 to 1 or 5,000 gold for one. It's only three crystal. That might as well be an ocean as big as the Atlantic. So there's no hope for there. Any other purchases before I forget, though? I think not. I think everything else, all of our secondary buildings, our support buildings, those have already been purchased. So let's have Marini go here because I really want her to upgrade these golems. I do just realize I made a mistake here, though. And here's the here's the mistake. Marini is completely out of movement points. She has 50 left. 
And if Natasha sees a free hero, quote unquote free, and then decides to attack, that will feel pretty bad. Wow, and a big pathing error too. A huge pathing error. That, being right on top, looks like I should be able to just go north to south, but I cannot. That'll be nice because Marini is less likely to be attacked, but still, that feels bad. What a pathing error, especially in this early game where it feels like the margin for error is so small. Ouch, huge. We did not have 5,000 gold or 2,500 gold to simply give away there, by the way. I should have fought that fight, though. Um, I should have fought that fight. There's a chance that I could have at least cast some spells, even though they are boars. Um, even though these are dwarves, and dwarves will generally resist some spells. Still, it, it could have been worthwhile. We're not going to lose any spell points at this time. This is simply a win. We're going to take that win. We're going to continue with this estates. Um, we've kind of dedicated ourselves to this choice here, and that's the way we're going to go. We need another hero. Because, again, my carelessness. But we kind of needed to resupply anyway. This can help us with our timing attack. We're going to send absolutely everybody. And we will... How far do we go out of our way? This is a question. I think that we go all the way out of our way. We make Sarakin come back just a little bit. Get these troops head on back. It'll save us at least one full day. And then Halon can go back this way. I think that's what we're going to do. It's not perfect. It's a little bit messy, but I do think that this is a reasonable choice here. And we will make sure that Halon is fast for the future as well, especially since there is this road to explore soon anyway. Uh, we need to be on the lookout if the enemy is able to get phoenixes in week one then we need to be well aware of that before we run into an absolute buzzsaw. There is a castle up here. There's absolutely a castle up this road. You see that? With Luna just popping up like that, I think that it's almost guaranteed that there's a castle. So I think that rather than going south, I think that we're going to go north right now. Um, I'll, I'll pick up just a few things along the way. Not much. But in general, I am going to work very hard on taking that castle as quickly as possible. Wherever this artifact is buried, it will be just outside of a warlock castle. That is interesting. I believe that this is volcanic terrain. This is a shrine of the second circle. And maybe is this a little bit of jungle in the bottom right here? Hmm. This, this appears to be volcanic jungle. And we know that it was mentioned. Here's some volcanic terrain anyway. It was mentioned that the artifact would be to the east. Maybe that's east or maybe that's east. Either way, it'll be difficult to say. But let's have Halon head back on up and complete this circuit that we talked about. Until we get Crystal, we are a little bit, uh, I don't want to say dead in the water, but we are uh, less than less than ideal. The enemy leaving these treasure chests, I assume that they saw us and said that's a bad thing. We don't want any part of Fix Fox. And I think that they'd be smart in doing that. The problem is, is that you lose all this treasure, which I'm not sure if I'm going to turn it into experience or gold at this point, knowing that I have 7,300 gold. But it's worth noting anyway that it's possible that that was a huge mistake. Maybe this road will take me all the way up to the north? Difficult to say. This is not an extra large map. This looks to be a large map. Large? More than medium. This looks to be more than medium. And so this road may take us very many days out of our way. A little tough to say, but uh, with it being day four, I think that we have time. This ratio feels bad to me. This ratio feels good to me. The The way that I have to think about that choice, do I take the experience or do I take the gold? I always have to think of it in terms of either 500 experience or 1000 gold. And do I really want to pay 1000 gold for 500 experience? When you put it that way, it makes the, the choice a little bit more black and white to me. A little more cut and dry. Because the exchange rate just doesn't feel the most appropriate. Especially knowing that 1,000 gold worth of troops can get me 500 experience points just by fighting neutral creatures. I am not sure about this fight at all. 
I do not think that we can take this fight at this time. I think that we'll take massive losses. And I don't think that we have significant and meaningful spells to truly do damage long distance with two spell power. I mean, even our seven earth elemental, you know, this will be six earth elementals. Ooh, you know, um, I think that we would take tremendous damage from these walls at this time. And I don't feel comfortable trying to fight this fight. I did see another hero up here to come to the north. I think that we just try and keep these sorceresses contained for now. Although I would love to take them out because every single week I don't take them out is one more week that they are able to grow. And because they are sorceresses, they will get their top tier creatures before me. They, they already have. They have their fifth level creatures. I do not. And so every extra week's worth of growth is bad for me. And yet, with my fifth level hero, with no major spells, except for some blinds, I just don't think that this is a fight that I should consider fighting. Several. Several. It may be two weeks of growth. I mean, it's month one, week two. Let me do some other stuff, and that'll give me just a little bit more time to think here. Um, because the alternative I'm thinking here is this. If I'm able to get this trading post, I can blitz through this area, I can get back, I can get two weeks of Magi, and then I can come back, and I think I can really do this fight. Or I can try and do it now. I don't think my spells are going to be any better than theirs. I don't. And with the defenses, I think that this is a fight that I avoid. I do. I would love to I would love to just absolutely obliterate them. I do not think that that's a fair uh, possibility at this point. So we are through. We're going to pick up Halflings. We're going to pick up Witch's Hut. In fact, let's get the trading post now. Because this will allow us to trade not with the power of one marketplace, as we were trying to earlier, but with the power of three. And with that, we are going to get our three crystal. Uh, we are going to need to save some wood. We're going, we're going to do it like this. Two wood, one, or, or, or two chunks of wood. So 10, 20 wood, and then 10 ore. And that gives us our five crystal. And that, that feels pretty worth it. Especially knowing that with Halon, we may be able to come on in rather than go this long way this water wheel for 1000 gold would be nice this magic garden for 500 gold or five gems would be nice but since it's day six it'll be day seven tomorrow i think that we prepare to come right on through here and this will be just as good or better for us luna is still staying staying put what's the rush ballistics that could be terrifically useful absolutely so uh, the catapult is going to do greater damage to the walls there's nothing worse than seeing your catapult take multiple turns to get through one section of wall sometimes it'll take two turns and that just feels so bad and this is going to avoid that we're not going to do two shots just yet with basic ballistics you just make sure that you basically take out one whole tower one whole section of wall at a time but that's still terrific we will take it for sure this feels like a slow start I would love to have already had that Sorcerer's Castle by now. I think that this is going to be a good choice. Mm. If we could have had it, say it ain't so. With 11 gems, though, we were always going to be way, way too far away from giants at this time. We're going to go from 75 halflings up to 129, 20, 128. I don't think that Halon can get all the way here just yet. We're going to go straight for this temple. We're still going to be three turns away, regardless of what happens here. Um, but we're going to purchase... Do we purchase all the troops? No, we do not purchase the Iron Golems. We will purchase everything else. We will move them down into our army, and Halon can defeat some centaurs without too much issue. Do I go out of my way to get this gazebo for our primary hero? I think that we do. I do think that we do. Oh. Oh, lucky. I do not want these two heroes to meet up. I do not want them to meet up a pack, so several into a pack. Interesting. Interesting. 
If we're gonna do this, this, we may lose a few troops, but Halon should have some spells anyway. No losses, no problems. And then since Serkin's gonna have to go back to the temple anyway, again, once again, I know that I'm being not very smart with my movement points, but I'm thinking as I'm playing, and that's to my detriment, I think. Um, one of the things that I appreciate very, very much about skilled Heroes of Might and Magic 2 players, and 3, and 4 for that matter, is the individuals who take every opportunity on the adventure map as a challenge. There are individuals out there who primarily will focus on the tactics in battle, and they will get great advantage by fighting fights better than anyone else will. I know this because uh, that's my brother in a nutshell. My, my brother is tremendous. I come from a long, proud family of excellent Heroes of Might and Magic players. And my brother is tactically terrific when it comes to the battles. If he gets you in a battle and if it's anywhere near close, he will find a way to beat you. I don't know how he does it. I just know that it's fair. But he will find a way to beat you. Whereas, and I've mentioned this before, whereas my dad is absolutely a logistical wizard. He will find a way to get every ounce of advantage on the adventure map as you can possibly find. And what that does is that that then translates into wins, that translates into victories in battle, because he leverages everything he finds on this adventure map against you to win. For example, what would my dad do here? He would have gotten this fairy ring and he would have gotten this idol, and he would have gotten this temple, and he would have gone into the next battle against this castle that we are coming up against. He would have found a way to have made his movement points work out as such that he came into this battle with plus two luck and plus one morale. And he probably would have done it in just as many days as I would have. How does he do it? I don't know. He's a wizard. But I appreciate very, very much the people that take it as a challenge to be skilled at adventure map movement and such. Okay, so this is a problem because we have three armies that we have to contend with. The nice thing is this, they have not combined forces. I think I might have an opportunity here and there's a bit of a decision, a pressing decision in front of me. This is about as good as I can be for the moment. With these enemies, if they combined the several unicorns and the several unicorns and the several unicorns or the few unicorns, however many it is, we will get crushed. What I can do is I can fight these fights one by one. I talk about battle map tactics and I talk about the value of the blind spell because with the blind spell, you are able to break up fights. You're able to uh, isolate fights. This might be the ultimate fight isolation possible. I know I talked about taking Elk's head immediately. With it being day four, what's the rush? Friend, what's the rush? Perhaps the best tactical thing I can do is to be flexible and say, I don't want these armies to combine. I should attack them one by one, and then I'll deal with this castle after. I, I think that that really is my best hope here. I think that I better take this very seriously, and I think I need to fight these fights in order of easiest to hardest. No, I think I need to fight it from hardest to easiest. Why hardest to easiest and not easiest to hardest? Uh, easiest to hardest potentially looks like the easy hero will lightning bolt you as they laugh and run away, and now you are unable to defeat the bigger army simply because you ate two lightning bolts in the previous encounter. The same potentially applies. You may be completely exhausted by the time that you need to fight the easier fight, but something tells me that if I can only pick one, defeat the big army or the little army, you need to defeat the big army first. Why is that? Um, someone somewhere mentioned an excellent principle. The idea being that if you have 10% more troops than someone, than a, an opposing army, you will incur some losses, but if you have 100% more troops than them, you may incur no losses. Keeping enemy troop sizes down matters a lot. And so for that reason, I'm going to attack the bigger of these two armies. I don't think I need to worry about this pack of basic dwarves just yet. Pack, pack, several. Several, pack, several. 
Lots of sprites, no sprites. That's probably one single dwarf. That's probably several, several, several unicorns, several greater druids, a pack of grand elves, a pack of battle dwarves, and one single dwarf. Which is the tougher fight? It's, it's Luna. Luna is the tougher fight. And we are going to do this, by the way. We are not going to attack this castle at this time. We're going to attack Luna. We are then going to attack Astra. We are then going to go up to Carlon. If we have any army left, I think that these steel golems are going to be very important for this fight. I, and I'm very happy to have them. If we had uh, two stacks of rocks, a six and a seven, that would be good. But I don't think that that's going to be nearly as valuable as these ten steel golems will be. Okay, let's see how good my instincts are or how bad they are. Okay, first off, 149 halflings lost. Ouch. Uh, it looks like the boars are not going to be prioritized at all. The rocks are probably, we're probably going to lose a lot of the rocks just because they fly. They're going to go right into the enemy a little bit. Um, but these halfling losses are completely unacceptable. I would, I, I hate to lose five out of my six magi. Let's see what we can do here, though, to make this go a little bit better. Just a little bit better. We will leave the boars for last. I don't know what spells Luna the Sorceress has, but she has zero attack, zero defense, two spell power, three knowledge. So she is level two, I believe. That makes, yeah, that would make her level two. 30 spell points, though. I'm guessing that she's got access to at least a level two mage guild. That's probably a fair assumption. So it's probably a fair assumption that she has at least a blind, or excuse me, she probably has at least a cure or at least a dispel. Probably not a good idea to cast blind now. Knowing that I have my Arc Magi who will get to go after their Greater Druids, while I am loath to take a bit of damage, I need to see what spell Luna comes out with first. I do. And I don't think that there's any spell that I want to get out first. There's always going to be time for a cheeky Death Ripple or a Summon Earth Elemental, but I think that this Blind is really my best spell. Simply to disable the enemy, I think that that is the best thing for me. These unicorns cannot get through here there's terrain here there's dwarves here we can go all the way down here and these one these dwarves cannot go this way good morale normal luck i think that we go as far as we can with these boars curse is a good spell i don't hate it but i definitely like the blind more and worth noting whoever goes last in this battle if there's a tie between speed six creatures the person who has the slowest creatures is going to go second. So because their dwarves are going to go after my steel golems, then my boars, so long as they don't die, are going to go before their greater druids next time. I think that we blind one of these creatures now, probably these elves, and then when the boars go, I think that then we will blind the greater druids. I think that's what we're going to do. I do. So we're going to mitigate damage this turn from these grand elves. We're going to consider where we put our damage down. That's a lot of unicorns but I also don't want these sprites to get off any damage off on these halflings. If I kill these sprites now, then the halflings can for sure take a shot, even cursed. Oh, that's a huge curse. They're going to do one damage each. Ouch, that's huge. I have to deal with the sprites somehow, though. I simply must deal with them because I'm not going to be able to do the retaliation. And I don't know if they're going to fly towards the Arc Magi or the Halflings. If I was them, I would probably go towards the Arc Magi. Let's take out the, ha the Sprites. I don't love that, but I think that that really is our best choice. And then I do want to take out as many of these Elves, these Druids as possible. Even though I'm still planning on blinding them soon. Two Unicorns. That's pretty darn good. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with. One, two, three, four, five... I'm going to go across the battlefield as far as I can. Oh, you did get good luck, you cheeky, cheeky dwarves. Okay, so we have the initiative here. Do I blind or do I cast another spell? Do I blind or do I cast another spell? Because the greater druids are hemmed up, I may consider casting stone skin on them. I don't know how I'm going to lose five Arc Magi. I wonder if Luna is just going to start 
lightning bolting very quickly, but even with two spell power, that's not that much. I think that we try and just keep these rocks standing strong. And if we go from 10 attack, eight defense, if we go from 20% bonus damage on the unicorns down to negative 5% damage, I think that that's going to be worthwhile. I do. So let's, let's stone skin the rocks. Because I don't see how else the Arc Magi are going to take any amount of aggression. And then, are, are you going to spend time with these elves? Are you really going to cure or dispel your elves? I doubt it. I do doubt it. And so for that reason, I'm actually going to attack the boars here. Or the boars are going to attack the dwarves. Interesting, they did. I did not anticipate that. But... Now I can say to myself, well, do you want to kill two unicorns or do I want to mitigate damage from these elves? I do want to mitigate the damage from the elves. Um, and I'm just fine with that. I think that we finish off the druids. The halflings can finish off the druids and then this way we can get out and we can still destroy all of these druids or these elves. Wow, my announcer skills are not working today. My goodness. My, my ability to do the play-by-play, -play, non-existent. Not happening. I am going to try and use these steel golems aggressively. I don't see any problem with trying to be aggressive here. And I'm still trying to figure out how did I lose so many halflings? One, two, three, four, five. It must have been some combination of the way that the fight worked out before that the unicorns must have gotten good morale. They must have gotten down the battlefield and they must have absolutely obliterated the halflings. That must be what it was. And something changed, something happened that did not occur. And I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm going to do something. I'm going to blind. Okay, hold on. I have 31 spell points left. 31. I potentially have two more fights after this. I can blind the unicorns. I can make sure that the elves are not going to get to go. And I can do a, a basically a blind lock with my halflings that are now going to do full damage. I think that we're going to blind these unicorns. It's going to be a little bit costly in the spell points department. But we're going, we are going to do that. I think that who can do more damage to these boars? Oh, it won't matter because we got all these ranged troops. And it definitely doesn't matter if we have good morale and good luck for that matter. And then all the rest of our troops are just going to crowd around. We have the blind lasting for two more turns. So we skip, we skip. And then the boars are not going to be able, are not going to, be able to make it now, but they are not going to, to get the opportunity to run. Rocks, we do lose one rock on the half damage, but all the same. So we went from 130 halflings down to 30 halflings lost. We lost only four rocks instead of 13 or 10. We didn't lose five magi like they anticipated. We fought this fight much better. How we fought that much better, I don't know. I've said before, sometimes the AI fights so much better than me and I'm dumbfounded and sometimes this happens. Um, any day of the week, do you take the human or do you take the F Heroes 2 AI? It's a little bit of a tough, tough call. I have to believe in me. But I recognize there are times when they are just simply better. This is interesting. I have 137 movement points left. That's just enough. <laughs> and with our 25 spell points, 25 spell points is enough to, to fight this fight, I think. That's four blinds if you want it. That's 24 spell points for four blinds. That gives you even three blinds and then a cure, three blinds and a stone skin, something like that. I do think that we fight this fight. And I think that this was actually, I think that Luna was the tougher fight unless Astra has some spells. Let's fight this fight. Once again, 120 something halflings and all this, it's going to be a victory. But let's see how much better we can do. Huge turn, by the way, this is massive. We are taking out swaths of very good enemy troops at this point. Very good. We do know that Luna had the Dispel or the Cure. I'm not sure which one it was, but simply blinding right off the bat is not going to be useful. Oh my goodness. Astra is much better though than Luna. I completely, the army size, I think Luna had, I think Luna had the better army, but Astra is the better hero by a lot. Nine knowledge, one attack, two defense. That's, that's better than Luna was. And then the three spell power. Thankfully, the spell power is low, which is exactly what you would expect out of sorceresses. Is high knowledge, low power, at least until level 10. And then it kind of, you, you, you come back a little bit. Um, I think once again, we're going to let the boars go. 
we're going to have the boars go. We are then going to let the greater druids go, and then we will take our turn with the Arc Magi. This time, this is Grand Elves, and this time our Steel Golems are slower than their four speed battle dwarves so that upgrade from dwarves to battle dwarves is actually a big deal because next turn their grand their greater druids are going to get to go first so i think that we're going to let the boars go now and we will blind the greater druids and then have our arc magi try to mitigate damage from these grand elves that is going to be what we do let's see how effective it is uh with this train we can avoid one two three four one, two, three, four. We can avoid damage from these unicorns if we go right here. Blind is a terrific spell. I think that we should trade blinds with you. And I will do four to five there. Can I just not count? Can I just not count? I think so. I think that I have a counting problem. And I'm terribly sorry for all of you that were screaming through your monitor saying no fix fox because you could see i couldn't see but you could so yeah um unicorns are the toughest unit i'm not worried about dwarves good morale they could get they could get the good morale do i attack the unicorns here or do i attack these six it's a waste of damage here but here i'm going to take the retaliation and if I take the retaliation and I get blinded, I'll feel really silly. I think that we defeat the elves as much as possible. And incidentally, the unicorns are kind of trapped here now, which I'm all for. Blind on the rocks, and then you immediately do that. That's interesting. You are still blind locked up here. I'm going to, once again, try and carve up this fight with these blinds. I think that we're going to have damage go onto the boars on this retaliation and we're going to pour damage onto these battle dwarves as much as possible interesting we are just blinding back and forth i think that my halflings i think that they correctly prioritized halflings as the as the best enemies here um with my two spell power by the way though i did make an error and the greater druids did just do 65 damage that's not gonna fly but then I ask you how much there's one uh, one more turn left on their blind. I'm going to cure my halflings. They're going to do a tremendous amount of damage and I'm going to I'm going to attack the unicorns. I'm going to break the blind now. They're not going to get their turn, but they're also going to do half damage. And then with these halflings, yeah, I can kill two to five. We killed three. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Steel golems are mixing it up. And from here on, I'm just going to continue to cure my halflings, I think. Is there a better spell? Is there a better spell? No. They are my... They are my artillery. They are a cannon. They are going to do some wonderful things. I don't mind if I lose the boars so much. The rocks taking that blind is actually not great for me. Let's kill four to six of these greater druids. And then you've still got 64 spell points and I have one out of 40. Plus this blind here, you're probably going to blind the halflings next. I may be in a little bit of trouble here. Thankfully, it's only two unicorns. So the blind lock is not going to be nearly as effective, but I'm going to get I'm going to get blind locked here. I'm going to get absolutely put into a blender, as it were. Where's the blind? There's the blind. Interesting that you attacked the rocks there. I don't think I hate that decision because they're probably your priority target out of what's left. Still, I don't love that decision. I suppose what else can you do at this point, though? Okay, if we kill two unicorns, the fight's over. If we do not kill two unicorns, then we may see Astra again after she runs. Uh, what's the margin? This is 55 hit points. We can do between 49 to 62. The It's more likely than not that we actually kill two unicorns here. Let's hope we get lucky. We do. Terrific. So that's another 1500 experience. And once again, we still have, we, we didn't lose any halflings that time. We didn't lose all the Arc Magi. Was it simply a matter of the blinds? I think so. The AI for uh, the auto battler did not take into account our spells. And so the enemy, I mean, that just shows you. Though we would have won, being able to mitigate the blind lock, tremendous.
cannot be overstated. We do have a summon boat spell here. Oh my word, what am I going to do with that? Let's see, eagle eye or luck? Should we roll the dice? Huh? Huh? Roll the dice? You thought I was going to do a 50-50. Nah, we're going to roll the dice. We're going to go with luck there. Okay, it's day four. I... D I don't feel super confident about that. I do not. I want this castle so bad, but I... I mean, with these troops here, with no spell points, with one out of one out of 40, I actually wonder if maybe we go and try to take whatever castles down here. If there's no castle down here, I will be absolutely baffled. And yet it's quite possible. I'm aware. Let's turn our attention to matters at home. Is there any way that we can get another six gems in the next couple of days? Yes, there's this windmill here. Let's visit this now. Mercury. Close, but no cigar. There is this windmill here. I don't think that that's likely, especially since there's these sprites here. I think that gold is not going to be too much of an object. Let's get another hero because there's much of this map to be explored still. Indeed. And then I guess this is the question. Do I try and meet up with Serkin the wizard? I think not. I think that we, for that reason, leave halflings and just take one boar here. We will get the gazebo on our way out. Maybe we get estates again. Who knows? And then we will just kind of see what we can do. Okay. As so long as Carlon stays at home, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And then I am adventuring this way because maybe this castle is defended and maybe they took all their defenders here. If there's a castle down here, I think there must be. And then we can, we can make something nice happen for us. That won't be the difference between us getting Titans or not, by the way. And plus, Mandigal is not too far away from this trading post, if that's what we end up doing there. Basic pathfinding with there being snow? That's a nice pickup. We are for sure not going to get the windmill. We're going to go straight for this trading post. Oh dear, are we... We might be just barely in range of Carlon. Six-speed Grand Elves. We might have just thrown away 2,500 gold for the second time in this scenario. Hmm. We have this nice wider resolution so we can see more of the map at once. And this is what we do with it. I ask you. Oh, that was close. Um, but she is absolutely going to be faster than us. I suppose that we are merely doing this so we can get four more gems. When it comes down to our cloud castle though, we're going to need five and five. We've got two more days. So as so long as we end with one wood and one ore. Oh, never mind. No, we have one more day because we have to get it on day seven. Uh, we're going to need a little bit of wood and a little bit of ore here. But we can trade one of each at this rate. So there's one. There's two. And nothing else matters. And we're going to get one more gem tomorrow. So let's just trade one sulfur. And then Mandigal is a very, very expensive single-use marketplace. I see Carlon here. I do not want her to dive this way. For that reason, though I could probably explore more to the north here, I am actually going to go back towards her castle, encouraging her to go back and maybe sit in Elk's Head for one more day. <gasps> oh, we just took her castle for free! She came this far by road because she had Grand Elves at her speed six. Now you have slow dwarves in your army. You can't get back before the new day. That's kind of funny. That's a little bit interesting. Huh. Okay. Well, okay. I... I... I'm not too sure... I mean, that changes my plans drastically and for the better, for sure. Like, this is absolutely the most correct thing we could do. I know I, I said, oh, we're going to go this way. Be flexible at all times. Be willing to let your plans change at a moment's notice. Always. This town, this castle of Blackridge, I still want to make sure it's defended. It's going to be two more days until we get uh, additional troops here. I don't think I want to send Halon down to explore into this area. I do not. I will definitely have enough gold, though, for one more hero. No, I will not. 
I can trade for the little bit of resources I need, though, if I if I really want to. Do I want to send... You know what? Since it's Agar, who has the six-speed creature, and he has the gargoyles, I'm going to send Agar as, as an explorer while Halon goes back home. That's what we're going to do. We're even going to get out of Agar's way just so we can get as far and as fast as possible. That scouting and those six-level creatures are going to make this worthwhile, even though we are going to have to trade tomorrow. And when I say tomorrow, I mean right now. We're going to say goodbye to Manigal. And you are unable to get back home. Whatever whatever troops you might have had there, not going to be worthwhile. Okay, so we have at least one, two, and three castles then. Oh, this did not get registered in the intermediate step when the AI took its turn. The the flag there did not pop up. Do I do I use Agar in the way I had mentioned before? I think so. I think as much information as I can get is good for me. Unfortunately, this is a little bit of a bottleneck here. We're not going to get as much information as I wanted. But we know exactly where this sorceress castle is, and that's actually important. If it's all the way down here, maybe I rethink how long um, I should I should go out of my way to get it in the future. That information, I paid 2,500 gold to know exactly where this castle was, and also to have advanced warning in the future. Rebecca. How do you have these troops at day seven? You're going to get even more. What is going on here? I ask you. The, wow, we need we needed titans and giants yesterday. We really did. You can't trade all of your wood and all of your ore. You need five and five. So be a little bit careful there, Fix Fox. Oh, geez. I say that and then I almost make a mistake like that. Okay. So it's very costly for these troops. Um, wow, we're going to lose 7,500 gold worth of heroes in short order. Good idea, bad idea, bad idea. Absolutely bad idea. And, and I'm not here to defend myself on that point. You are completely correct. Uh, the nice thing about this castle is this. Though we have no spell points now, we will have spell points tomorrow. Now, are these heroes going to want to attack us? I do not know. If Natasha dives south, that'll be very scary. If they stay here, okay, so be it. Okay, we are, we're gonna have to hit in turn and just find out what tomorrow will bring. Should I step on this windmill? I think I shall. I'm gonna step on the windmill just so that way, when it's day one, I'll have more movement points to kind of get back and to see what I need to do. So let's do this now. Okay. Remember, I'm fighting this fight just so I can use a cheeky magic arrow. 30 points of damage? Sure, why not? Do I want to kill 15 sprites or two druids? I think I want to kill or two elves. Again, my play-by-play -play is broken. And oftentimes you will find me uh, doing a terrible job of announcing what's happening, happening as it's happening. I will say east when I'm going west. I will... I will just make a litany of errors. But my hope is, is that if you are listening, then you don't know that it's an error. And if you are watching, then you are using your eyes and you're able to graciously accept that at times Fix Fox does make mistakes as he is narrating these fights. We have quite a long way to go before the upgraded Cloud Castle. Again, that trading post is going to be potentially massive, but we will have to wait and see. Natasha, we've defeated her once before. So long as she's got dwarves, I'm not too worried. A pack of creatures. I mean, we got to take out all these all these enemies at some point. We really do. Oh, you know what I should have done? What I should have done is I should have had my uh, my six speed creatures in my army in my castle. Uh, if if I was attacked in the castle, my garrison troops and my heroes troops would have combined, and it wouldn't have been a problem. But now I don't have as much movement points as I would have because I'm dealing with these three speed creatures. However, one nice thing is that if you notice here, we're traveling by road. And then this reason why we're short from car lawn is because we are going out of our way on snow. It's possible that though we are going to lose a little bit of movement points attacking Natasha, we might still be able to defeat car lawn. We might be able to reach. So lots of dwarves though. Hold on. That's a lot of dwarves. That's a little scary. Let's see how this fight goes first. And then we will, Carry on. Yeah, let's do this fight first. 
possible, but I but I'm hesitant to believe that we are going to lose this fight that badly. I don't know where they're getting all these unicorns. That's so many unicorns. So many unicorns. You know what would be really nice right now? A chain lightning. That would be great. That would be so nice. Okay, the important thing is that so far in these fights, when we first started fighting these sorceresses, we had 13 rocks, we had 6 arc magi, we had about 149 halflings. We've still kept the bulk of our most important troops. We had 32 boars, we're down to 9. We had 10 seal golems, we're down to 8. Um, but we've kept all but one of the magi. We've only lost about 30 halflings. We have lost about 10, 9 of the rocks, and then we've lost a lot of boars. But for the most part, Though our army size is dwindling, we're keeping the most important troops. The troops that are meant to take damage are doing their job, and that's fine. Um, we'll see if we're able to continue this trend or if things will go worse over time. One, two, three, four, five. We got to go here if we're going to threaten those greater druids. And I think that we do threaten the greater druids for this reason. We're once again going to let them cast the first spell. If it's a blind, if it's a blind, then we're going to be aware that the sprites are going to go first. And then we're not going to cure until it is our steel golems turn, because I really want the halflings to get their damage off this turn. But if it's some other spell, we may consider a blind instead of a cure. I think, I think so. So let's go to here. A curse is okay. I can I can deal with the curse because I'm still going to get the damage off. And then I think that I'm now one step ahead as far as blinding you and kind of stun locking you. So I'm going to work on the unicorns first. I'm going to mitigate damage here from these grand elves because they can still do a lot of damage, especially against those those fragile halflings. And then because the unicorns are blinded, I actually think that I try and kill 20 sprites so that my shooters can remain unencumbered. But I'm still going to encumber these greater druids. And then, can I kill the rest of these grand elves? No. Our stack size is too small. We are cursed. That curse is going to last for two turns. Uh, Natasha's zero attack, zero defense, two spell power, four knowledge. Good morale, good luck. Only 17 spell points left. I do think that I try and make sure that I don't have to worry about these Grand Elves nearly so much in the future, though. Because they don't have any sprites, I'm not worried about this. And then we do get to go first because the dwarves are, again, a slow, slow creature. And, and once again, I think I'm going to... If they cure their unicorns... If they cure their unicorns, I will get to go with my Magi. And so for that reason, I'm going to... Move in this... Let's see... Grand Elves, I'm going to deal with probably with the Magi, so I might as well just pile damage onto these greater druids. Even though boars are not going to do a lot, I'm going to do that, knowing that you cure. It's a cure, not a spell. And then I'm going to once again blind you. And now I have the initiative, as it were, with our blinds. And so every single spell from here on out, Natasha has one more cure left. I think I'm going to end up doing that one more time with her. So... Uh, do we kill four Grand Elves so they can't kill any more of our Halflings? I think so. Even if all even if all that does is save Halflings for a future fight, I think that, that is one of the best things we can do. And right here, I would love to take out these Greater Druids. They are... They've got their hands full with my troops. The Dwarves with their five defense have less defense, and so therefore my damage will still be better. Because Halflings only have two attack skill. Yeah, so I'm going to be doing even damage instead of reduced damage. I don't love it, but I think that that's still the best thing for me. That's a surprise. I did not anticipate that the doors would just bum rush the Arc Magi. That is an acceptable term in today's PC culture, by the way. The term bum rush has been around since ancient Roman times. I would like any of the linguists in the comment section to fact check me on that. Because I know I'm right. <laughs> or maybe I just suppose I'm right. Um... I care less about the dwarves than I do helping out these rocks. Let's see, one, two, three. I know the halflings are still... Well, the halflings now are not cursed anymore. They're no longer cursed. So. 
Oh, let's... Let's kill as many of these dwarves as possible. It's going to take at least one more turn from the halflings to do anything. But the rest of the damage I think that we can pour onto these greater druids. Yep, and you are now out of spell points. I've got two more rounds of blind before I really have to worry about you. This is shaping up to be okay. I'm going to start my surround. I'm probably going to take damage from the dwarves here. I do. 11 points of damage, not too big of a deal. This is a little frustrating. Um, this is a point where you could be impetuous and you could attack the unicorns and break the blind now. The unicorns have already lost their turn, haven't they? They have already lost their turn for this round of combat. It can't be undone. I think that we actually attack with our ranged troops now. And then when it's our steel golems turn, we blind again. And the rocks will attack the dwarves. So yeah, we're actually going to... I thought to myself, well, this might be a time where, you know, we have one more turn. We might as well wait it out and clear out all the other troops off the battlefield. No, 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 no. We are still going to be able to meet all of our goals while still... Moving forward, we are not going to attack yet here, though. We're going to skip. We're going to attack. And then we're going to blind. Just abusing the turn order. And now we are going to blind lock these enemies. And with 16 spell points, that's going to be two more blinds. Uh, but we're going to skip here. Break the blind. Skip one more time, attack one more time, because these halflings are doing massive amounts of damage. And then we're going to blind one more time, just to be safe. I do not want to mess this up. I certainly probably could have gotten away with uh, without spending six more spell points on the blind, but I'm. It's it's more important to be correct than to be lucky. Luck is good. We try not to be lucky. We try and make our own luck. If we succeed, we want it to be because we did things correctly. 53 halflings. So we talked at the very beginning of this battle how we've been able to save the important troops. Um, this is officially... Our halfling numbers are dipping into a spot that is unsustainable. But for these enemy defeats, these enemy losses, we have killed... I mean, I feel like, I feel like we need to keep track about how many sorceress troops... Uh, we have killed so far. Oh, gosh. So, oh, gosh, I hate this. In the Price of Loyalty campaign, <laughs> um, there is there's the second scenario. And in the upper left, I had heroes hired because I, I spent so much gold on heroes. And I was just I was just spending money and it was poor practice. And yet that's what that map required. And so I said to myself, huh, I should probably keep track of that. And so I had the heroes purchased stat in the upper left corner. And then in the upper right corner, I had lightning bolts used and it ended up being a ridiculous amount of lightning bolts. We're going to have a similar tracker for this video. And in fact, it's been up by now. I've been keeping track and you're saying to yourself, why, oh, why do we have this counter for how many sorceress troops that have been killed by Fix Fox so far? This is why. This is why. And, and I hope that what that is really going to enforce is it by this point you're saying to yourself, wow, we're killing a lot of troops. We're mitigating damage onto our troops. We're doing great. I think that we're doing great so far. I really do. No guarantees, but I think we're doing okay. We're going to take the expert estates. I mean, that's 7,500 gold that I've wasted on heroes. That's not cheap. 7,500 gold on heroes already. We can attack Carlon. Should I press my luck? Should I press my luck? Not with 10 spell points. We go back. Okay. If you are a gambler, you need to know when to hit and you need to know when to stay. It's time to stay. It's time to stop. Absolutely, it's time to stop. Let's find a way to get all of our troops back um, together. Let's find a way to get everybody on the same page. Interestingly enough, we might, no guarantees, but we might end up purchasing giants. I hate to do it. I am so very loath to do it. We are so far away though from our upgraded cloud castle that I think that just having the troops could be useful. I do. I think that Carlon is running away from me. How far can I get here? If I can get... Oh, 
great. It's a it's a choke point, and so it's not giving me a, a, a reasonable tally. My tool is not working to figure out how far I can go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So by road, because road is road is 75 movement points by road, by the way. When I say snow, it says penalty 150. Really what that means is it costs 150 of my movement points to go one grid space through the snow. More if it's on a diagonal, less if it's just... Well, not less, but just up and down. There's a greater penalty for going diagonal than there is just for whatever. Uh, but then on the road, roads are also they're only they're 75 movement points is what they cost. And so I'm guessing then that with my 1300 movement points at next turn, I should probably be able to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'd probably get to like right here. Let's just assume I can get right there. If Halon purchases troops and he is ready to meet me right about here, that could be worth it. We have 7,200 gold. Do I purchase any of the Titans or do I just get some of my other troops? I think that I'm going to, I think I'm going to have plenty of other troops without actually tipping into my giants. And then that will allow me to build some sorceress troops with Sarakin and uh, get them into this army. Who would be most useful? Probably not a shooter. Probably not the unicorns. Actually, probably the sprites. Having having the flexibility of having another shooting creature is probably better than having the boars. I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to purchase... I mean, 10 sprites? Is that really valuable? No, but it's going to be another creature that can force greater druids or elves to take a turn of combat to deal with them. We're going to do that. We're going to head down this way. With our full spell points again, I know that there's probably another enemy castle up the road to the north. There's a chance that Carlon says that, oh, she'd like to try her luck, but at least I have all my spell points at this time. And then Halon is going to purchase the troops he can here, minus the giants. And minus the golems, because we're not, we're, there's no guarantee that we're going to be able to get them upgraded. And we're going to go to right about, right about here. It's possible Rebecca will be able to spot us. It's possible, but this should be far enough away that Carlon should not be able to get to us. So I, I'm happy with this decision. We should be able to meet somewhere here in the middle. And then if Sarakin does not get turned upon by Carlon, then we should be able to overwhelm their forces with ours. Again, they still have lots of dwarves, but they're the two speed creature. That actually works better for us, I think. So let's go on to a new day. Interesting. Not going to make it easy for me, and that's okay. Understandable. We're going to pursue... I don't think Rebecca can make it up this far. I think that that would be too far for Rebecca, but it might be close. And then I do think that we fight Carlon. I don't think that we wait here. Yep, I think we fight here now. It's going to say we lose. Again, that, that blind lock, but we've officially fought fights worse than this. Um, even though we're 53 halflings down now than from where we were originally. <gasps> Ooh, interesting though. Interesting. So, how has the fight changed? What can you see? What have you noticed? I'll give you just a couple seconds to look. So they had two six-speed creatures, Greater Druids and Grand Elves. I have one six-speed creature, whereas before I also had two. My boars were right here and they went first. That's going to change this battle a lot. How exactly though, I am struggling to see that far. What it means truly is, is that blinding these unicorns is going to be much more difficult. And in fact, if I'm Carlon, Rather than focus on halflings or anybody else, I think that I would immediately blind the Arc Magi because then you're guaranteed to have all these other creatures get to go first and go before you every single time, pretty much. For at least the next two turns. This might be the time to summon 12 Earth Elementals, actually. Maybe, I don't know. Do we wait on a spell? Z 
zero attack, zero defense, two spell power, five knowledge. Good morale, normal luck from Carla on the Sorceress. Assume she has a blind, assume she has a dispel, assume she has a cure, and assume she has a damaging spell, but for two spell power, I'm not too worried about a damaging spell here. Yeah, blinds are, are going to be her most effective spell. I think that we attack with the Arc Magi. I think that we do actually attack the sprites just because I can kill the whole stack. And then that's one whole stack of creatures less that I have to deal with. Plus, they're going to get into my face right now. These poor halflings. I hope that the halflings get blinded. That sounds crazy. I hope the halflings get blinded and I hope that at least two Arc Magi survive a barrage from these ranged enemies here. With two defense, it's probable that at least one will survive. And then I think I, I think I do. I think I wait on the blind because if I cast a blind now, it's just going to get dispelled, but then they're not going to have a blind. But I think my poor halflings are going to take a beating regardless. I do. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to give them the opportunity to blind me now. And because it's the F Heroes 2 AI and it's really good, they're probably not going to blind the Arc Magi because my Arc Magi have already taken their turn this round of combat. So they're going to go on to the next high priority target, which is definitely the Halflings. And though you could curse them, I think, I think that if you have a blind that they're going to blind instead of curse. They would curse the Halflings if they were hoping to instead bring down their numbers significantly with their ranged troops. Let's see what happens. Fix Fox, you know nothing. I don't want you to ever pretend like you know what's going on around here ever again. How dare you? Don't even talk to me, Fix Fox. Don't even talk to me. Alrighty. I think that we blind the unicorns, actually. We're going to... Here's how this is going to play out. We're going to use the rocks to jam up these greater druids. It's going to take them at least three two to three turns to get through them unless the dwarves are able to get up there and help very quickly. I really want to keep these Arc Magi alive. I'm probably going to have the sprites go up here with the greater druids as well. My Magi are going to get to go first next turn because their dwarves are so slow. And so they will be able to attack these Grand Elves and mitigate damage there. I just don't want to slot troops here knowing that they're going to get attacked. Tell you what, are we going to use summon earth elementals this fight? I, th I think we, I think we better to deal with these unicorns. And the reason I'm asking is because if we're going to do it, we should probably do it now. Except we don't have the buffer. We don't have a second six speed creature. Uh -huh. So we could take our turn and then blind the unicorns after they've gone. I could slow the unicorns. I mean, if you're going to slow them, you might as well blind them. Except a slow is going to probably push their priority from the AI down a little bit. But then they're just going to get good morale because, of course, they will. Okay. Um, I think that we're going to cast Summon Earth Elemental. Just so we have somebody who can brawl with the unicorns, and then we may... We'll see what to do in just a second. Let's... I, I really want to use the summon Earth Elemental. Four Earth Elementals wasn't very good. Twelve? Really good. Unfortunately, they're all the way up there, and they're a slow creature. They're a long ways away from being useful. Wish I'd thought of that. Fix Fox, you really wanted to use that Earth Elemental spell, huh? Yeah, I did. How's that working out for you? Bad. Four Grand Elves go down. Let's get these other troops down here as much as possible. You know what? Is the damage from seven Grand Elves really going to be worth losing Arc Magi to Blessed Unicorns? No. If we run up here, though, then with the terrain, the only thing that can hurt the Arc Magi is a blind or a seven grand elves or a damaging spell i think we do that ultimately wow and it ate up a curse 
cost 30 spell points, but these earth elementals looks like they're going to actually be pretty useful for us. It does. It does. Um, we're going to continue to focus down these troops that are right now a problem. Steel golems, we may lose them all, and that'll be okay. Fortified damage. What a weird curse. I do not like that curse at all. I do not like it. You cannot get around me because there's only one hex there. I, I want to help the I want to help the rocks out, but I also want to make sure I don't take any more damage here. What to do? I'm not worried about these troops. What to do? Let's we'll take the damage from the Grand Elves. They have not been doing much. Let's just see. Grand Elves 13 damage twice onto the who they attack. It doesn't even say who they attacked, does it? Huh? It does not say who they attacked. And I don't recall. We're gonna help the Grand Elves, or the, or the, we're gonna help the Rocks kill the Druids. There goes our first Arc Magi. Very good troops, very hardy troops. They've been doing great for us. I don't really regret this decision, especially since the Halflings can continue to assist. Next turn, I'm probably gonna use the Arc Magi to defeat these final Elves, though. And then the Halflings switch target onto the Dwarves. Yeah, let's just kill three. Take care of stacks. Oh yeah. Get out of my face. And then we're going to try and save rocks for later. I don't think the enemy's gonna run anytime soon. We're even gonna take the steel golems back because I don't want any of my actual real life troops to take damage. The earth elementals stay on the battlefield until the end of the fight. So there's no reason to try and conserve them. Might as well just let them do whatever they wanna do. Just keep punching the earth, you little dwarves. Now I think that with six dwarves left, we um, descend upon them, doing damage with the rocks, doing damage with the halflings, doing damage with the earth elementals. And we turn another loss into a victory. But we are officially exhausted, and here's my concern. The lower your troop stacks get, the more damage you're going to take. Those five steel golems, that's actually kind of a big deal. You know, the 54 halflings, we are now down to uh, less than 20. We're down to 16 halflings. If there's another big army out there, and I'm guessing that there is, I'm guessing that there is, then we're in, we're in a little bit of trouble. A little bit of trouble. I would love mysticism. I would love mysticism here. It's, it's actually... It, I think it's a purposeful decision that the Price of Loyalty campaign map makers made to have very few or rather very strategic wells because it it inherently will boost the value of mysticism i feel like other maps generally have lots of wells everywhere and so what point is mysticism but the value of mysticism goes up if there are less wells out on the map and i think that that one extra spell point is not going to be worth more than having one extra shot with my ballistics so that's what i'm going to do for now i I know so frighteningly little about this map. And for that reason, we are going to spend another 2,500 gold. <laughs> Watch as he immediately gets obliterated by somebody coming from the north. And I think that there, I think that there might be. There's our crystal. We need that. Um, I need this resupply here. I think that going here is going to be worth my time because that's going to make the resupply better and then I can potentially go take this town. It's day three. I will give up this wizard town if... or I will give up that sorceress town if I can for sure get Rockhaven because this one looks harder to defend than this one. And then I'll be able to fight kind of from this direction. So that's my plan at the moment. Oh! I forgot about that! <laughs> I forgot that that was a possibility. Oh, the convoy has at long last arrived. Regrettably, it has been beset by bandits on its journey here and has far less supplies than we had hoped. Make your way south for our spies have found rich mines there. Yeah. You know what? The, the 3000 gold, though, that's a hero. That's that's Agar. One of the times we purchased him anyway. Yeah, that's not that's not terrible. OK, I don't trust myself to go to the magic garden and then still have enough movement points. I think it's not going to be a problem, but just in case, just in case. 
Let's do it like this. Boop. And so, five gems, very helpful. We're up to 10. That looks pretty good. With that resupply, is that enough to defeat this enemy? With 13 spell points? She's the last barrier. Where you keep getting these unicorns from? Oh my word. In the final scenario of the Voyage Home campaign, you either choose to do scenario four or scenario three, um, and you either choose to go with your king and country and defeat your rebel sister, or you side with your rebel sister and then defeat your king. Regardless, I had supposed that there was a script that was run, and Zents from the F-Heroes 2 team did a great job in setting me straight. He says that there is no capability at this time for there to be scripts. There's not the possibility for the enemy to just somehow magically get more troops. What you see is what you get. And somehow, what I see and what I get is several unicorns multiple times. I think that we need more spell points. We're gonna we're gonna go north with Agar just a little bit. Let's get the crystal mine. It's gonna eat up a lot of our movement points because it's on snow, and that's not ideal for your scout, especially if there's somebody right here. But I don't think I can beat this fight. Mm -mm. This might be the time where I go back. I don't trust myself to go back home that way. I think that Rebecca is going to defeat Halon. And we're going to have 16 spell points tomorrow. That's not enough. I think I would need at least 18 spell points. I think I would need three blinds. I do. That summon earth elemental in the previous fight was very good, but it's kind of kneecapped us at this point. I think that we head back this way and then we make the decision based off of what this hero does about whether we sprint to Black Ridge or we stay here. In the event that they try to go here, we will have four giants to defend. That's not nothing. We're not going to lose this castle. Um, I would really like to get troops situated appropriately though. I haven't really considered getting the red tower, and I'm glad I haven't because there's no mercury to really help us out with that. So Phoenixes would be a really great bridge unit to get us more into that late game Titan area. But for now, we're just going to focus on our goal. Again, this early gem mine, I think that that is the best thing for us. And again, there is this trading post. So if we go this way instead of this way, I think we'll be okay. There goes Halon. He's not going to get to go. He's not going to get to cast a spell, but all the same. Look me in the eye when you shoot my halfling. Darn. I was really hoping that that wouldn't happen. And and for that reason, I do wish that I had used my scout as intended and scouted. Because that crystal mine is going to last all of two more turns. Who cares? Best, certainly, to um, go somewhere else. To actually, actually use him for what he was intended, what his intended purpose was to go north. Um, I'm thinking Ariel is going to go down this way. Here's what we do, I think. I think that we go in. I think we get all of our troops except for our slow troops here. We're going to dismiss the centaurs. I feel bad for it. And I think she's going to go south. And then we should be able to catch her next turn with our 1500 movement points. We may pick up some troops here. I don't think that I really love having the boars. Just two boars in this army. Maybe for the purposes of spacing in the fight to come. But I'm going to wait to find out. Currently, we are a one hero army. I need to see what Rebecca does. It's going to take her at least two, three turns to get this way. But if she's coming for Sarakin, if these two heroes look like they're going to meet up, I once again must fight my fight while they are 
separated. We're getting some good knowledge, though. 50 spell points tomorrow. That's going to be worthwhile. Day five. Ah, they're still not going into my territory. That's okay. I cannot beat Ariel. She is laughing at me. She is just taunting me. Three steel golems. That's not even better than the troops that we have available here. Four unicorns are definitely better than that. Five greater druids are definitely better than that. Let's slot this in. We're going to lose our good morale. We have the plus morale because we're in the town right now. We have the tavern. It's day six. Are we going to be best off waiting one more day or do we set off? With 50 spell points, with the way these fights have been going, I think I would actually welcome a fight. I do. I think I would welcome a fight. I think we're going to go right here. Let's see, we just picked up, what's our slowest troop? A three-speed creature. She's not going to be able to get farther than we can get back. Remember how, I think it was Carlon did that? Where they had their six-speed creature, they moved all this far, and then they were unable to get back to defend their town. I don't think that they're going to get so far by us that we're not going to be able to reach them here. So I think that we set off with what we have. And if they choose to fight us, so be it. But otherwise, we are preparing ourselves to get titans and then win this fight if they had phoenixes already it would be a requirement as it is i think that's just going to be the difference between losing lots of troops and not i do think okay no new heroes at this time hmm 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 well i I anticipated I'd be able to go about this far. I did not anticipate I would need to defend this castle. There's a chance that Rebecca will not be able to reach all the way there. I think that we cut our losses. We get our trading post now. We trade for the gems necessary to get our upgraded cloud castle. We're going to trade for as many gems as we can. Uh, yes. Five and five. Try and keep a little bit of wood here. Like this. One. And two. And there. Huh. Somehow I missed one. Um, and it doesn't hurt my feelings to over trade. Because even after I clear the barrier of getting the upgraded cloud castle, I'm still going to need two gems per titan. Do I trade a little bit of gold? Your expert estates is not that good. I don't think we do. I think that we... Maybe five gems there. Maybe some gems here. Maybe some gems here. I think that we just try and get a little bit lucky with our gems. We're going to want to pick up this halfling hole anyway. Let's head this way. Go here. We'll go here, here, and then bounce back. I'm going to lose the castle of Elk's Head. I'm going to put up something of a fight. Not a very good one, but I'll, I'll try and do a little bit of something. And I'm actually going to... I'm going to purchase Agar one more time. <laughs> no, because... I thought about sending him this way. There's no point, and not just because, oh, there's these heroes here, but because I already know everything I really need to know over here, and it's going to take him too long to get up there. And if I purchase him here, what, is he going to go through the snow? I would be better off waiting and maybe getting a, a hero with pathfinding. <laughs> Alrighty. I think we're going to leave the three speed creatures, but we're going to take everybody else. This way looks like it's inviting disaster. This way we can maybe trek through the snow. Even though an enemy hero might come this way, I think that we can be faster on snow because we have less movement penalty. And we will have six speed creatures. Yes, yes, it's all working out. It's all working out. It's month of the centaur. There's probably centaurs everywhere. So far, I, I haven't quite seen where that's going to cause me concern. This gold is actually really, really well-timed. There they are. Phoenixes. Okay. And there's actually going to be more phoenixes than this. This is just the phoenixes that we have seen. 
There are phoenixes that just spawned because it's a new week. So there is much to be concerned about. Again, we are trying to get windmills. I don't think I have time to get the mercury, although I would like to. By fighting those sprites, I lost my temple buff, by the way. Okay, 18 gems. Let's just wait a little bit. We're always going to need one more hero. Might as well get Myra. It's not a lot, but she'll get a couple of extra wizard troops. And I can't even get the windmill now. Darn. Centaurs? Send rocks. Save the halflings. Send the rocks. Oh. Let's just split this into three. And then have the magi. Let's do that. It, it feels sad. I'm, I'm more sad than anything to have to do this because I may experience just a few losses. No, thankfully not. Okay. Two gems. It was all worth it. Every little bit of it. I'm happy. I'm happy. And I'm actually going to go faster uh, next turn because I'm, I just lost the three speed halflings. Here's a question. How much of a defense do I mount here? Probably not much because I need the I need the gold for my Titans more than I need to keep troops away from them. Although I thought of something interesting. If you're just trying to purchase troops to keep them away from the enemy, check this out. Oh man, 400 gold per druid to keep them away. That's a lot of gold. That's 2000 gold. What if I just want to spend 1750? It still gets rid of the druids, but I saved me 50 gold per druid. Just to keep the enemies away. I, I do that a lot more in Heroes 3 than I do Heroes 2, by the way. Playing this game of... I, I'm buying these troops only because I don't want you to have them. I do that a lot more in Heroes 3 than I do Heroes 2. Heroes 2, it doesn't matter nearly so much because the difference between the 5th level creatures and the 6th level creatures is so much more massive. There's a more gradual slope in Heroes 3 in in unit strength. Look at the... Look at the... What are they? Warlock? Or, no, no, no. Wizard? Wizard in the snow, and they've got the Giants and the Titans, and they've got the Naga as the... and the Naga Queens as the units right below that. I mean, a 300 hit point Titan in Heroes 3 looks a lot less crazy of a jump compared to the 110 hit point Naga Queen, as opposed to here, where the 300 hit point Titan next to the 35 hit point arc magi doesn't make any sense so i play that game in heroes 3 a little bit more of hiring troops away this is one way we can abuse this f heroes 2 ability to switch back and forth between the upgraded and the lower tier creatures i could do that here i guess i don't really do that here with the elves but um that's that's something we could do how many of these troops do i really want to save i don't think it matters i think i think it doesn't really matter i'm just gonna keep a couple away from you though no i'm not gonna keep any away from you that might be the difference between one titan we're gonna split it like this do we have a captain we have a captain i don't even care don't even care do i need to use my second marketplace now though yes no never mind <laughs> yes i would like to no i cannot <laughs> all right so our forces suffer a bitter defeat. We'll just make sure that we cast one spell and then we will call it a day. Ouch. Ouch. I do take solace in the fact, though, that we didn't actually have to spend any troops to take this castle in the first place. Right? This was essentially a free castle because we were able to backdoor them. We don't even have a magic arrow. All right, fine. We're just, we're just going to kill uh, three to four. Wow, you kill three to four with one steel golem? Just gonna hit Q now. I don't care. Okay. 16 and 1. We did kill a unicorn. That's good. They are chasing me through the snow. That is fantastic. Keep it up. Way to go, gentlemen. Oh, you almost caught me. You almost caught me. Okay. You are going to catch me, though. Stables. Ooh. And a magic well. Interesting. And luck. So that's actually good to know that sorceresses who already have a greater chance at luck they have even more luck here and this is very nice i might have gone left erroneously on accident 
trying to get their castle when I should have been going right, this has actually been worthwhile. Again, 2,500 experience for what? A little bit more experience or, or a little bit more information. Look at this. That looks like just the top of an observation tower right here. I think that is. I think that there's probably a little break in the trees and you can get an observation tower right there. We are not going to get there, but that is also good information to have. Magic well. Yeah, magic well and stables and this little cache of resources that hasn't been cleared out. Okay. Very interesting map. I am enjoying this. I hope you're enjoying this because I'm enjoying this, certainly. Myra, I believe, if I move all my slow creatures up, will be able to get at least one Titan up shortly. We are short on gold. We are short on gems. This trading post is going to be important. Let's play it a little bit safe and stay a little bit away from these sorceresses just so we can trade better soon. Let's see what they all do. If they all combine into one, which is kind of one of the hallmarks of hard difficulty here on F-Heroes 2, then we are really in trouble. But as soon as I get at least one or two Titans, I'm feeling much, much better. So let's see where this goes. There's that one Phoenix. One Phoenix? Did you not have a well in the castle that you used to purchase these Phoenixes? I don't know. I'm actually going to skip and skip and skip and skip because I don't think they can kill all these boars. I think I'm going to get one more magic arrow off. Yeah, I'm going to get one more magic arrow off. I don't think I'm going to get any more than that. I might actually. Hold on. Skip, skip, skip. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get one more magic arrow off. Never underestimate the power of being petty. That's not a quote, but it should be. Uh, do I take the risk on the dwarf? No. <laughs> oh, I should have. I absolutely should have. Eh, at least I got rid of all of your... All your sprites. Um, that was an error, by the way, though. Why didn't you run when you had the chance? Was it really worth one sprite to lose a hero that you could never hire back? Who has pathfinding? Just saying. This is too rich. I can absolutely defeat Rebecca. I don't want any part of Ariel. I'm sure Ariel can get this far. But as you can see, they've combined some of these troops. So long as this fight doesn't go terribly for me. It's a lot of that's a lot of unicorns. I think I wait. I don't want to lose these troops when I'm so close to getting my Titans. Yeah, I, I mm, can't. So let's trade for what we have. We don't have much. I think Sarah can sit here one more turn. Tomorrow we're going to have enough gems for two titans and with our kingdom income being what it is 2500 gold we're going to be short just a little bit how much gold do we need to trade for now so we assume we have 80 so we need 2000 gold can we get to 2000 gold that would be 400 well it's looking let's see that's 100 each yeah so one so that's two five eight hundred gold don't trade your gems that's 800 it's 1,200. No, we're going to be about 800 gold short. Unless, what else is our kingdom income? Nothing. Okay, we're not going to be able to get two titans next turn. And so for that reason, we back off. Rather than take these, these enemies now, we back off. Maybe we swing through the south. You know what? Maybe we swing through the south. Let them keep their castle. They don't know where we're at. They don't know. They have they haven't scouted this castle. They don't know. If you're a player, you're smart enough to know, but they don't know. We do. They've got some heroes on snow. They're wasting time going back and forth. I think that, I think, yeah. I think we purchase our two titans now. We take that castle to the south, and then we just go from there. We're not going to waste any 
of our gold on any other troops at this time. The Titans are really the primary focus. We will keep the greater... Seven speed phoenixes, six speed druids, six speed grand elves. Do we want the six speed greater druid or do we want the five speed unicorn? We don't need another shooter, but does the speed come into factor about these future fights that we will face? Phoenix. This is crazy. I think that I think you keep the five speed unicorns simply because they're five speed and I'm going to want to be able to layer in. If I attack them. Yeah, I think that you're going to want the six speeds instead of the, four, the five speed. That's that's interesting to kind of think about that far in advance, but I think that that's going to be best for us by a lot. Even though I'd rather have the four unicorns in my army as opposed to the greater druids. If I need to, I will use the greater druids to block. I will have them walk in front of an enemy to try and stop a choke point. I will do that. Um, their job is not to put out damage. Their job is to be fast. So Myra's going to go back and hopefully bring me another Titan in the next day or so. Let's just take our free experience here. <clears throat> I'll accept it. I hate that it's not free. It should be free. It should absolutely be free. With the water wheel, an extra thousand gold. The sulfur mine looks great. It's too far away. Our goal is this castle. Because I got that castle is an extra 1,000 gold. It's essentially a free gold mine. I say free, it's not really free, but we all know what I mean here. On the way, we're just going to get a few things because it's day six now. Here's some defenders. We are ready to move our Titans to the front. And what will they do? Are they getting excited? Are they are they looking like they're wanting to come and get us? They look like they are. Um, day seven, it's not gonna matter if it's day one or day seven that I fight these guys. This will be just fine. Okay, orc growth is up. This castle must be ours. It says we're gonna take a lot of losses. I think that we could take a significant amount of losses. We got a right turret, left turret, and a moat. Yeah, this is a pretty good, this is a pretty upgraded castle. It's not the best I've ever seen, but it's pretty okay. I don't think the enemy is going to descend upon summon elementals. I don't think they're just going to waste everything on the summon elementals. I think that we can plan on this captain having a dispel or a cure. 40 points of damage is not a lot. I think blind is out. Maybe a disrupting array. Maybe a slow, actually. If I slow the sprites, then they're not going to jam up my halflings. I think that I'm going to actually probably do that. I don't think that the enemy will dispel or cure a slow. We're going to take a lot of damage here. My goodness. And if I blind these greater druids, then these grand elves are going to get to go next because they're just going to advance in the turn order. Uh, tell you what, if I blind your sprites, that might eat up one of your spells. And then that still meets my goal. I'm going to take damage from the shooters anyway. I don't love this, but this is probably the best thing for me. And then I'm going to have the magi attack these grand elves because they won't have a penalty through the wall like the titans do the titans do no matter where i'm going here though that's a good blind i forgot that they might have blind i think that they are thrilled at that development i will sacrifice some rocks i'm not going to attack the elves i'm going to attack the dwarves because that's actually going to do the damage to me hmm I think we might as well kill druids. Well, thank goodness we do have titans at least. Uh, do we? Are we in danger of losing a titan? If we are in danger of losing a titan, we need to stone skin now. Is it possible? It's possible. I would rather lose all my halflings and then mix sorceress troops in in the future than lose a single titan. 
This is hemmed up for a moment. They've blinded. They just blinded. They blinded. We will blind. You blind? I blind. No, no, no. You blind. I blind. We blind. You blind. It blinded. Okay. <laughs> Very blinded, actually. It, it would appear. Okay. Um, so, nothing here, nothing here. You know, I'm guessing that they will actually remove the blind off the greater druids, though. So, if I had to guess. Um, the rocks, I'm kind of anticipating the rocks just dying at this point. So... By the way, that angers me to no end when I have used my blind against the enemy and then the towers remove it. That angers me to no end. Most annoying thing I could ever imagine. So silly. Well, blind, blind. Let's start killing some of these other troops. Six attack, nine defense, nine to, yeah, let's kill the unicorns. It's a little bit of a waste of damage, but it's still going to be reasonable for me. If I can kill these elves, then I can actually fly the rocks up. And I think that with the rocks and the halflings, we might be able to kill all these sprites. We're going to have to kill them at some point. I know it costs us some rocks, or it costs us one rock, but I'm still okay with that. I have no idea what this captain here is going to do with their turn. There was 19 halflings. Thankfully, the ballistics has really removed a lot of these walls. So we're we're feeling much better than we were. And in fact, I think that we're going to destroy the gate and then we're going to destroy this. So the next few turns are spoken for. There's still two more turns on the blind. There's that. There's that. And then we do break the blind right now. I haven't seen an offensive spell out of them. I have no reason to believe that we shouldn't just attack. So the nine rocks is a huge loss. The four Archmagi pretty big 36 halflings at this point that's not really like a power stack it's not a priority to keep them going we're going to take one step out of the way with Sarakin, and we're going to hire another hero yes another hero fix fox you're trying to get titans yeah but i need to know what's around here and i don't want to waste my main hero's movement so so that's what i'm going to do fix fox it's a bad idea yeah i i, I know i know but I'm sticking by this decision. I am. Fix Fox, why? Because I'm dope and I do dope stuff. That's actually not my quote. That's a quote from Kanye West. Uh, which is... Yeah, that's, that, that, that's Kanye in a nutshell for you. We didn't actually step in the castle here. We need to... We'll pick up the cold ray and the lightning bolt. And then as far as additional troops here, who do we take on the road with us? More greater druids. I need to keep I need to keep some flyers. I think I think it's time for the halflings to go though. I think it's time for the halflings to go. We're gonna buy the four unicorns because we still have four unicorns up there. Wait, why did you buy all these troops? You don't have time. You don't have you don't have resources for that. I need to go just a little bit out of my way here just to see what else is here. I'm guessing that there's nothing else there, so we're gonna head up. Ouch. Ouch in the sense that that makes makes me think that there might be something there. Will free is meant to scout to make sure that I don't have anything to clear out before I head north. We might not be able to find out in time. Whatever Ambrose does, he needs to think that thought through quickly. He stole some gold. That's an extra thousand gold from him. Let's go here. I should have had Wilfrey go f first, actually. We'll take diplomacy. Those are equally terrible choices for this hero. You again? Steam is updating it again? I thought I turned you off. One second. <laughs> okay. If Steam pops up one more time, we know it's cursed. So. Hey, but at least at least we'll know at that point. Um, look at this. Plus one, plus one, plus one. That could be big. That could be big. I think that I think I could beat Rebecca with this army though. So I think I'm just going to try and clear out as much as I can. But if someone passes this median line, that will be that will immediately trigger a very aggressive response from me. Looks like they are not. And if they try to get too far up this road, 
Myra will be able to stop some peasants. That's not a concern. So let's take our fights where we can. Definitely I'm going to pick up the mysticism here. Scouting is good. And as you can tell, there's been some times where scouting would have been even better. But right now, I think that's just kind of the way this is going. Is that um, being able to pick up the mysticism with the spell points. Being able to resupply in the field. It's pretty critical. Pretty big deal. Aha! This is wonderful. We will pick up the obelisk. Oh, don't worry. We will get that. But for now, we're going to do that. This hill fort, I guess it's nice because of the dwarves. Dwarves can become battle dwarves in the hill fort. Seems like a long way to go just to get your level 1 creatures up to level 2 creatures. Or or your, your level 2 creatures from non-upgraded to upgraded. I think it's good. It just takes you a long way out of your way. Let's just go grab this real quick. I know that this potentially ruins this plan I had, but it's peasants. How scary are peasants? They can't be that scary. We are still so far away from Mercury, or from the Mercury necessary, to do much there that we are not going to even worry about. Phoenixes. This is highly concerning. It looks like Rebecca is going to be able to really clear out all this. And it looks like there's stuff there still. Okay. Another obelisk. It looks like there's going to be maybe six obelisks total on this map. So this other one up here, that's going to be pretty useful. Wait a second. Hold on. <gasps> Find the ore before the first day of the sixth month or your rivals will have surely gotten to the fountain before you. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it. No problem. Yeah, I'm going to make it. It's just all of a sudden I just realized that there was a time limit and I was <gasps> a little scared. What if I messed up and I didn't even know it? What if I made a mistake and it wasn't even intentional? Yeah, I do intentional mistakes all the time, don't you? It's like a flex. It's just be like, yeah, I can, I can make mistakes and still win. What of it? Rebecca going back. Okay. We had talked earlier about the enemy scouting, and if they scout, that's bad. I may lose Myra here, which is unfortunate. Wilfrey's going to go this way because I don't think that we need to worry so much about this back door anymore from Rebecca. Um, but I, I, I want to do everything I can to make sure that Ariel does not come my way. We can for sure meet up with Sarakin along the road. If if Myra is what tempts Ariel to come into my domain and see that I have a castle here, I'm sad. But strategically, I think it makes more sense to drop off the troops and then try and run. And that is what we're going to do. So if I was Ariel and I saw this, I would just run. But sometimes the AI sees a really weak hero and they think, ah, but with this big of an army, knowing that I have a solid wall at my back, kind of, you know, kind of, then if I could take this castle, I'm going to be feeling pretty good. Rebecca does back off. We lose Myra. I think that they've gained vision of my main town here. That's not good, but they haven't gotten the observation tower. That's OK. We must fight this fight. The enemy has fled. That makes me think that this might be a pretty good hero or at least the enemy has some artifacts or something and if I can prevent them from running with my 60 spell points I mean that's 10 blinds I think we're going to do that let's I kind of hope I only kill 10 of these greater druids I hope I don't kill all of them the chance that I don't kill all of them though is tiny unfortunately yeah and so because I'm almost Guaranteed to kill them all. I'm just going to blind here so that way I get this initiative here. And let's take the first swipe at them because they've lost their turn. If they cure, if they cure, then they'll get their turn back. And this way they don't get their turn back because they can't cure. What are you going to cure? You can't cure a blind that's already happened because the blind is not there. So you're not going to cure and then get your turn back. You've just lost your turn. And now, unless your unicorns get good morale, then that was a complete and total victory for me. Okay, yeah, complete and total victory. All my objectives were met. No problems. Oh. That's insult to injury. 
That's just not fair. The Battle Dwarf is going to attack the rocks and we will kill him on the retaliation. Oh no. Six damage. That, that wasn't nothing. You're blinded here. You only have one other troop on the battlefield. No, you have the dwarves. 13, 13, 13, 13. Can I kill 13 Battle Dwarves with these troops? So there's going to be... Oh boy. And the Unicorns are going to get to go. I think that we... Lightning Bolt for 100 points of damage is going to kill the rest of these... Druids. Or these Elves. Druids. Once again. My narration skills. 15. 3 to 5. There's 10 left. 7 to 9. And then the Unicorns kill them. You are blind locked and you're not going to get to run. Tremendous. Perfect. Perfect, you might say. Knowing that it only costs us spell points, no troops. That's another 2,000 experience. No artifacts. Interesting. All right. So it did cost us Myra, but with six Titans, you better have a lot of Phoenixes. And guess what? I don't think you do. I don't think you have a lot of Phoenixes. We get the Obelisk. That's what's critically important. Wow. Okay. But Oh, and Rebecca actually ran away as well. Okay, I'm not going to question it. There might be... No, it looks like there's a gap there. Maybe there's not, but... If Rebecca runs this way, I'm going to be a little bit upset because I have to chase her. But we're getting to the point where I can send an army with one Titan after her, and we'll be just fine. It's day 7. Let's take our castle back. Wilfrey's just going to clean out all this, and then he's going to run away. I'm going to need to purchase another hero anyway. I should have done it last time. It will be Flint. Sure, why not? Unless Vitania is a hero I've already defeated, there's no point in even looking at her. Marini, though. Hello. I have this sulfur mine to still get. Let's set out now. And then I actually... I'm not worried about any troops that they can purchase here, and I don't care about losing them to the resupply. I care about Rebecca getting into my back line. One rock, sure, I will accept it at this point. Take the ballistics, heading up, and now all the enemies should be in front of us. And that feels wonderful. Keeping track of our mines, we still need that crystal mine that's up here back. But we will get that. We are going to pick up this water wheel, and we're going to head back just so we know if Sarah can needs to double back or not. Now it's probably time to think about this red tower. With seven titans left, though, it's not even a question. Why get the opportunity to make more six level troops when your six level troops now are just so good? Luna could absolutely run right by me, and that would be horrible. I know I can definitely beat this castle, but I can't do both. I have to pick. There's no guarantee she's going to go this way, and there's no guarantee that she's not coming after me right now. Several phoenixes, though. Let's just assume it's nine. Let's assume it's nine. With my six titans, I can absolutely defeat her. Um, her blinds are going to be powerless against my titans. I still have some options with my speed. I think we defeat her and we'll come back for this castle shortly. The enemy has fled. Yeah, let's see if we can avoid that. It was nine phoenixes. And that's good because then I will assume that there's only three more phoenixes up to the north. Maybe I forego this other castle, actually, then. This current castle, maybe I just continue north to take out the castle that has more phoenixes. I don't care about these low-level troops here, but I probably care about those troops up there. Yes, probably. Okay, uh, lightning bolts and cold rays don't really work on phoenixes, but you've already cast your spell? You blinded my arc magi. Well, I will return the favor. I will blind your greater druids. I will see you a blind. I will raise you a blind. It's actually important that we don't go out here because the unicorns can potentially bother the titans in just a second. We are for sure going to attack these phoenixes. We're not going to lose a titan on the retaliation because we've, we've whittled them down to just five. I do want to take out... I'm going to take out the Grand Elves. And then the rocks are probably going to fly into a defensive position, actually. Maybe I blind the Phoenixes? Huh? No. Oh, interesting. Wow, the Dwarves. One, two, three, four. The Dwarves are going to get to get into this fight with the Titans in just a second. Rather than jam up these Grand Elves, we're going to 
attack the phoenixes more to make the unicorns not have uh, access to my titans than anything. Oh, but I mean, if we got good luck, we might as well just use our good luck and just overwhelm you. Which is just fine for me. We're still going to kill two phoenixes here if we want them. Is there is there another option out there? Tell you what, let's blind these unicorns. Let's dispose of these phoenixes. If I got the good morale, then I could have used that to kind of roll some other options my way. I'm not worried about the damage I will take from the dwarves. Let's try and head this way. Our, our blinds do last a considerable amount of time. Three more turns before their greater druids are up. And then... Um, you've already cast your spell. I'll take your return damage from the Titans. I don't think that the enemy is going to run because there's still so many hit points worth of troops left on the battlefield. I think. It's especially not going to be a problem if I do it this way. Oh no. They could run if they wanted to. I like that dispel. I think that's a very smart play. I think that's I think that's wise. I think that's a good call from them. Interesting that we haven't seen more than second level spells though. Have you noticed that? Like we are month two, week three, day two. And still, we have not seen any amazing spells yet. What do I make of that? I assume the enemy has just been pouring its resources into troops. But um these druids are unfortunately going to get to go unless I reapply this blind because it was about to expire and they would have gone first. Now though, the unicorns are not going to get to go. Oh, the Arc Magi are here. I almost messed that up. For some reason, I thought that my unicorns would get to go. They did not. So we lose one Titan instead of two. That's actually pretty reasonable for, for nine Phoenixes. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Nomad boots and mobility, extra 500 gold per day from the endless purse. This hero, Ambrose, he's going to pop up with some troops in just a second. I don't care. Um, we're going to explore in this direction. It is a little bit of a gap here. Flint needs to go pick up some additional Titans. And our secondary army is going to actually defeat Ambrose. He doesn't know that yet, but Serakin's already going to head this way. And I don't think that Ambrose will leave his castle because he believes he's just going to get swallowed up immediately, but Serakin has a plan, and Serakin will not be dissuaded from taking the enemy at this time. So, things are going well, I think. There's a lot of map left to be played, though. There's a ton of map left to be played. Traveling by road, no other thing to do, no other place to go. Month two, week three, day four, we got plenty of time. We got that summoned boat earlier. Few resources. Let's let's cast few resources. Look at this. Oh my goodness. What's going on right here? That is interesting. This is also interesting, by the way. What is going on right here? I suppose you have to come from this direction, but that's interesting. Wildebar, I assume that this is an actual shipyard here. So that you can always purchase a ship, even if for some reason your boats get scuttled and you're unable to cross the channel. Uh, I don't need the gazebo and that bad. I'd rather back off and maybe Ambrose stays put until I can come and get him with Flint. Again, are you sure you don't want Phoenixes here? With knowing that I've just purchased how many Titans is it? Two Titans. That's going to take care of all my problems up there. I think that now we get the Red Tower. I think that this area is going to be secured enough it's, it's an investment for the future. It's an investment for the future. Because having that 7-speed creature guaranteeing that even if I'm attacked, I'm going to get to go first, that's a reasonable investment. Here, I'm even going to get one more Titan. And now I'm not scared of you at all, Ambrose. Yep, we're going to go right for him. I say I'm not scared. Watch as Ambrose is actually like a really great hero. And I completely have underestimated him. Actually, don't. Do me a favor and don't. We're gonna have to come back with Serakin, by the way. We we must pick up one, two spell power. 
2,000 experience, plus one knowledge, whatever else is in here. We're going to have to do a little bit of backtracking, I fear. I do fear. With one more, well, with two more slots available, I think that we do take the pathfinding here. We're going to take the pathfinding. We're level 13. Experience does still matter. We're going to move just, just a little bit out of the way to get the experience. We're going to purchase a hero now. Hopefully a sorceress. Halon again. Uh, we're going to get Halon. Who's going to leave his troops? There's the phoenixes, by the way. No spells in there that I really need. And it's Halon's job to explore. Oh, I guess you can't get through here. To pick up the, the freebies. To help our primary hero know what to do. And then I am going to purchase one more hero. Sandro. Anytime I see Sandro, I'm going to get Sandro. I love that the Heroes of Might and Magic 1 portrait for Sandro came over. If you notice, there are many portraits from Heroes 1 that made it on over to 2. And one of my all-time favorite portraits actually skipped from Heroes 1 to Heroes 3, which is the portrait of Yogg. The Barbarian. So, interesting little note for you. Always worth it to keep track of who's been where and what's been what. We're going to be very thorough with this. Yep, nothing there. And not a lot of places to land just yet. I don't know what's up here. We're going to let... Halon do his scouting to figure out what's up there. And in the meantime, we're going to use Sarakin to go down and get... Oh, is there an observation tower here? I think that in this little sliver, I think there actually is an observation tower for the keen-eyed viewer. For anyone who is very interested. I was hoping that would be gems. I'm okay at this point. I don't need view resources. We already cast that once. Um, was there anything else interesting here and here? Those were the two things that really caught my eye. So that's pretty much it. There's a lot here, though. I think across the channel it's going to be much tougher to defeat the enemy. But with two, with six phoenixes a week and three titans, I'm not concerned, if that makes any sense. I'm just not worried. It'll be fine. We will survive. Extra gold here. Wow, I really want to get over here now. Truly, I do. Uh, an arena, that's excellent. We'll come back for that. I, I'm going to... Am I going to waste Halon? To find out? <laughs> I think I will. I think I'm probably going to waste Halon at the graveyard. Just to find out if there's... An artifact that I can get there or not. I'm going to have one stack of two and then one stack of one on the... Titans, just to kind of put my eggs into separate baskets, just in case something crazy happens. But I am going to fight this fight. No problems. It's a victory. We're going to accept that. And then it's now going to be... Oh, it's not going to be Wilfrey. Wilfrey wants this gazebo because he's selfish. He's doing this all for his own glory at this point. Yeah, there's an observation tower right here. Okay. Well... Halon, a lot of good that did me. Purchase him. Okay. We might as well clear out all this. Again, who knows when we're going to come back. Pendant of free will. We got space, so we might as well. And if you can't tell, we're a little bit on auto combat here. One sec. Responding to cries for help, you find river sprites making sport of dunking an old man. Feeling vengeful, you rescue the man and drag a sprite onto dry land for a while. The sprite, uncomfortable in the air, gives you a magic pendant to let him go. So we will be free from hypnotized spells. Hypnotized spells will not hurt us. That's wonderful. There, we're getting closer. We are getting closer. Luck. We already know the skill. We don't need to go there. We've got basically full spell points. We don't need to go there. And do I really care about the Spade of Necromancy? No. Do I care about the experience? Sure, why not? 480 experience plus some crystal. I'm not even I'm not even going to pick up the artifact. I just don't care. And then otherwise we've pretty much cleaned up everything that there is to clean up on this map. Should I land to start exploring? No, there's more 
there's more to search over here, I think. And Halon, I am going to sacrifice him. I do want to search the graves. If he gets bad morale, that's best case scenario. If he dies... Okay, so they picked up the artifact that was here in the graveyard. Okay. We'll pick up the arena in due time. And then with these three titans, this should not be any problem in defeating this. Orange player's been vanquished, so we have defeated Orange. And there's still a few more things that we need to pick up here on the map. Um, but the important thing is this. Our troop counter is stocking up. We have six months to defeat this map. I don't think we're going to need all of it. But we have it, just in case. Any chance we trade for the 20 Mercury necessary? Not this turn. We are still too far away. It's a new week. Pick up the crystal. Might as well get the stables. And I think we better get the arena now. And the reason is, is we're going to get the arena. We're going to head south and we're going to pick up all these. And we're going to have a boat waiting for Sarakin to go forth and adventure later. Probably not a bad idea to send Halon with his less than stellar morale into this other boat. Knowing that we can purchase another boat here. Let's do that now so we don't have any problems with resources in the future. Sandro continues to sail and not land because we need to know what else is out here. Perhaps there's some goodies in the ocean, but that's not really the goal. The goal is really to see uh, tactically where we should go, what we should do. And with that much of the adventure map, the, the puzzle map explored, we don't really need to do much digging. We don't need to actually get this last obelisk unless we really, really want to. If it's on our way, we will certainly do so. But otherwise, eh, just doesn't uh, worry me. I was looking for a marketplace there. That's what I was doing. But yes, let's pick up this plus one and then Sarakin will walk all the way down. I see he collects his mishmash. Um, but we are somewhat on autopilot at this point. This does not require a lot of brain power. This is just making sure that we are being thorough, that we're getting all of our troops. Um, probably a very, a very, I talked earlier about players who will get every single advantage out of the mini map that they possibly can. I am not doing that right now. I don't think that that really is that big of a deal. I don't think that it's it's going to be the difference between life and death. I don't think that the margins at this point matter. That may be the problem with how big of a gap you have between 5th and 6th level creatures here in Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Um, there comes a point where going around and getting every windmill and every water wheel just doesn't really matter. It, it matters. It moves the needle to a degree, but it doesn't really matter. And that, and that does make me a little bit sad. Um, I, I notice in some maps I play through that you will see me being incredibly dutiful in picking up every single goblin hut, every single tiny advantage, and then I'd never end up using them. But I spent the time because it could have mattered, just because it ultimately did not matter, whether it was because of my strategy or whether it just they were never called upon and it not mattering, um, it just didn't matter. And is that time wasted? Never. Never. I think that part of the joy that I do find in Heroes of Might and Magic is being thorough. And that's part of the reason in the last playthrough, if you, if you were keeping track of that with me, it's part of the reason why I hated and loved that scenario at the same time. We just did the Wizard's Isle scenario too. And it was a two-parter and part one was a disaster because the go-to strategy what you ought to do time to get mage good levels what you ought to do is immediately get the wizard joseph and unfortunately i did not and it was for reasonable reasons i mean yellow popped through a stone lith and they disrupted me and then i thought oh it's not a viable strategy because they will see me and they will stop me and yada 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 no 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 that was the bad luck that was the five percent chance of things going horribly wrong and then i just wasn't flexible and i said oh that must not be possible and then we had this crazy crazy scenario and part of the reason why it felt like it was so bad to me was because i like to be thorough where i can and that map 
had this objective where you must take the town of Kronos. And because it was a town that was out there and we're, you know, just, just, it's, it's like the scenarios where you win by digging for the artifact. If you focus in and you just key in on the one objective and you ignore everything else, that's fine. And you, and you can potentially win the map that way, but you're not being thorough. And you're, you're kind of relying on luck and chance and hoping for the best. And that gives me a certain degree of anxiety. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what it comes down to. It does. It gives me just a certain degree of, of bad vibes. I forgot for a second that that was Serkin and not somebody else. That was almost less than ideal. But, um, so, so, so there's a certain degree of satisfaction that comes from being thorough. There truly does. We're not going to land here. We have one hero kind of landed out here. Remember that we just want a boat down here ready to go. I think one hero wandering around, oops, is, is enough. Unfortunately, because that was month of the centaur, it's going to take us a little while. It will. Maybe, actually, hold on. There's three titans here. How about we just hand these titans over? How about Wilfrey picks up all the titans he can? We're going to save. We're even going to trade four titans. Because we have so many resources. How about we send the rest of these titans? We can get five. Seven total. How about we send them and the magi and the rocks? down to our primary hero. Oh, we will buy the halflings just because. And we will see if Sarah can, can just get this little island here before he goes back and picks up the spells in Blackridge. But then those other units are earmarked. Uh, that 1,000 gazebo is not going to be critical for me. But this one will because it's near... Plus one, plus one. And then that'll give me time to get there. But yeah, I do take a certain amount of satisfaction out of being thorough. I do. To make this trade work, we gotta get in the boat. Get in the boat, go here, trade, land. It'll take a little bit of extra time, but we'll get there. And then that means that Sandro actually needs to land up here. I think... Is there a sorceress? I meant to do this a while ago. I purchased this boat and then I didn't actually use it. Whoops. We're going to wait for another week because it's day seven. Month of the peasant. If I were a necromancer. If I were a necromancer. Okay. But yeah, with this army, I think that we can definitely defeat a lot of these kind of lower level troops. Uh, I don't know what enemies I'm going to be defeating with red. I think I definitely want 130 halflings over the eight unicorns, though. Eight unicorns just isn't that much. That may make it into our final army. But for now, this is just the army that's going to get this section, this little spit of land. All taken care of. Whoa, what are you? Oh, centaurs. Duh. So. But yeah, that last scenario was a little bit of a disaster. Ugh. And, and really, and really, it was it was really because I tunneled in on, oh, hey, why don't we just defeat Kronos and ignore yellow and ignore red? And I mean, we won, but not the way I like to win. Not the way I like to win at all. Six Phoenixes, and I think it's going to be greater druids and unicorns. That's going to be the troops that I blend. It's probably... We'll have to take a look at it later, but I think it'll be Phoenixes, Unicorns, Druids, Titans, Arc Magi. Heavy on the shooters, but I think that's going to be an okay army. So let's have Kalindra get in the boat now. We're going to want to get more of these Phoenixes. We never did get the Red Tower. I meant to do that, I think. I say I think. I'm sure I meant to. I spoke about how I had three castles producing Phoenixes. Oh, well, we'll get there all the same. 
but it's always better to be thorough and beat a map if you can rather than just try and barely squeak by the objectives i think um i just i, I do take some more pleasure out of that anyway and i did actually between the actual last recording of that previous scenario and now i went back and i played it and guess what if you get joseph as your main hero in the first week you can have that entire continent to yourself in one week instead of four who could have possibly guessed that was absolutely <laughs> a revelation to me oh uh oh gosh i'm just gonna go here it'll be flint that brings the troops from elk's head over and then here we can go through here pick up more gems that'll be nice lots of crusaders i think i could be lots of crusaders with three titans should i yeah i need to get through here i need to i need to figure out what's going on here and halon does have some spells yeah even just even two blinds with his two spell power that'll be enough to split up the fight in a reasonable way um actually and we can get to right here we're gonna have halon pick up those phoenixes that's that's going to make it even easier it is now sandro's job to look as pretty as he possibly can it's your job it's a very important job i don't give that job to just anybody but you i trust you i know you're not going to disappoint this company I'm, I'm, I imagine that that's how a board of directors talks to somebody that they promote from within. That just seems like something that corporate America would do. I don't know how it is in other countries. I don't have a pulse on anywhere outside of the United States as far as how business goes. I don't know the first thing about business internationally, but it seems to me that there'd be some constants, some of which would be things like, hey, you're not going to disappoint us, are you? And that somehow working and people being like, no, sir, I won't, but possibly tell you what business is not necessarily a strong point of mine. And it's not really been something I've really cared about. Um, Andy Warhol, the famous painter, he was famous for the big, what the Campbell soup paintings. He, indicated he had a quote where he mentioned something about business he said um he said i like art and making money is an art great now we're gonna have to look up the actual quote quote andy warhol money and art quote let's just see what it was making money is art and working is art and good business is the best art making money is art and working is art and good business is the best art. And I actually really, really like that quote as somebody who I admit, I'm not very good at business. I'm not very good at the X's and O's. I'm not very good at, at the priorities. I'm not very good at, it's just, it's just not something I'm tremendous at. Um, I especially don't have a head for politics, right? But business is also one of those things where I recognize I'm a little bit out of my depth as it were. And I guess why I'm bringing this up is this, is that, you know, uh, for, for, for the things that do interest me and for the things that I am interested in, Hey, you do, you do a pretty good job, but, but money doesn't necessarily motivate me as a person. I know that it's, you know, it's a, it's a necessity. It's something that we're all required to do and get and, and this and that, but I've left, there's one job in particular where I specifically left that job because I said to myself when I started, the second that it's about the money is the second I leave. It's the second I quit. And I did. And I, and to this day, I'm a little bit proud of myself for following through with that. I was working with kids in the middle, in the middle of the Arizona desert. And it was the best job I've ever had hands down. And really what it, what it came down to was I, I got to give kids a knife and I said, don't stab me. These were at-risk youth. They had issues with drugs, depression, alcohol, family, behavioral issues, you know, whole litany of, of problems. And, and I got to, I got to work with them and, and it was, it was tremendous. It was the time of my life. And I said to myself that the second that that job 
was just me showing up for my paycheck. That would be when I quit. And there came the day when I realized that it's it's time to let it go. Um, it's been the best job ever, but it's time to be done. And I don't regret that. Not in the least. Not in the least. Um, and, and so, I don't know. I, I, I understand that my priorities are not everybody's priorities, and I don't think that everybody should should even aspire to that. I think that there's something to be said about Andy Warhol saying that making art and making money is good business, and, and that's something that you can be proud of and something you should should strive for and do, especially when it's good for you, good for your family, good for you know your 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 countrymen. You know, good honest work is good work, but it's not what motivates me. Money doesn't really motivate me. So, I guess that's part of the reason why, and I'm waxing eloquently here, I know, because this all does not seem to be, you know, particularly challenging Heroes of Might and Magic 2 gameplay at this point. I'm, I'm again, kind of on autopilot. Um, but I, I suppose that's why I enjoy spending time here doing Heroes of Might and Magic stuff, is because, really, I mean, this is, this is just fun. I'm having a great time. And by the way, thank you again to everybody that takes the time to comment. Uh, because I, I care so much about spending time just, you know, hearing from you. I'm glad to hear that people are doing well. And, uh, I don't know. I, I appreciate, I appreciate people very much. What a good game. By the way, if you, if you think about it, if you spend some time and you're interested, only if you're interested, don't feel compelled by any means. But if you are interested, it'd be fun to hear how everybody got started with Heroes of Might and Magic 2. I would love to hear how everyone first came across Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Because a lot of the stories I hear are generally things like I was playing this game that I found and it wasn't in my language. And then I figured out finally how to hit this little hourglass to move on to the next day for, for the longest time I couldn't move past. A story like that or a story of I was looking over my older brother or, or a family member's shoulder as they were playing and I was very interested. Uh, whatever your story is, I, I do want to know because that was kind of my story. I mentioned earlier that I come from a long family of excellent Heroes of Might and Magic players and that's, that's it. That's what happened. That's what happened to me. Plus two spell power, plus two knowledge. Came from a family of, of people who knew how to play and were good at it and then I did my very best to kind of carry on and I'm very happy for it. Look at this. So this ended up being, this is just a treasure trove here. It looks like there's nomads or wolves or something right there. Maybe it's champions. But if you go through phoenixes, you can get all this. I don't think this is necessary. We went through crusaders here instead of the phoenixes because I thought crusaders were the easier fight. I think I was right. But that's it. So I'm glad that we actually took the time to clear this out because it didn't actually look like it mattered. And Sandra right now, I feel bad, but he doesn't really matter. I'm not really doing much with him. Kalindra, she's just kind of waiting. Flint, he's waiting. We're waiting to bring troops to the front. But for now, we're clearing this out. We're going from there. Uh, but interesting, a couple things have, have happened. So the Black Pearl, plus two knowledge, plus two spell power. Excellent. We did pick up this excellent spell, by the way. The Mass Curse. That's a tremendous spell. We do need to continue with our Mage Guilds. Uh, picking up the Mass, what was it? The Mass Bless, I noticed that, and the Mass Dispel. The Berserker is actually really amazing. Berserker can carry a lot of fights for you. It's not going to defeat Black Dragons, but it'll defeat a lot of other stuff. And then because Kalindra has her knowledge, we're going to cast the View... Ah, there we go. We're going to cast View All. There is a tent here, guarded by, I think, Cyclops. And, and I can't see this much better than you, unfortunately. Looks like the most appropriate way to get there is to start here at the bottom. There's some things here, maybe some artifacts, artifacts along the road, maybe a big enemy here. Aha, there's a castle here. We need to get to this castle as soon as possible. This looks like a warlock castle and a warlock town here. If we can get to those, we will be in excellent shape. Those were not cavaliers. Those were unicorns. And looks like there is a artifact there. What that artifact is, we might be able to see once we go back. But otherwise, it's just a sulfur mine. I don't think we actually need a sulfur mine. And I'm actually struggling. I think that's treasure chests right there, too. So we, we probably don't actually need that, and that'll be good for me to know. This is the wrong path. Don't take that path. Go this way. Go to the right. Pick up this. Pick up this. And then it looks like behind this barrier is our enemy. 
and we just need to get close enough to figure out what they are doing and what they're defending. This artifact, uh, it's a it's an it's a gold mine. I'd love to have it. It's not critically important. Yeah, and it's month three, week one, day six. We're not going to try and cut this close at all. We're going to press our advantage. The peasants were in my way. That's my that's my excuse. The view heroes spell does not really matter. Oh, look, there's two heroes there. Oh, crazy. Behind barriers, I bet you. Fix Fox, how did you know they were behind barriers? I just guessed. I did. It's going to take us one more full day to get into the boat anyway, so I was not very careful with my movement points there. Didn't need to be. And everybody else is just kind of waiting. Month of the Eagle, or excuse me, week of the Eagle. Aha, there it is. Now, here's the thing. It's going to take you one full day to dig. So you can't just go through the barrier, walk there, and then ta-da, here I am. You must park a hero right here and then continue on. If I get a big enough army, the enemy might not try and even defeat me. They might not. So I think it might be okay to just figure out what they have and then we will go back. There are these lists here. There's these lists here. Oh, and here. So there's two right here. This view all spell is actually really, really nice. There's two. There's a lith here and a lith here. It's probably over here goes to there. And then from here, you can go back and forth. Once you get a blue tent, aqua barrier, we'll, we will find the aqua barrier. But I think that I'm going to, because it's a new week, I'm going to pick up all the troops I can. Again, unicorns and greater druids. We're going to send them to the front. As best as we can. We're going to go right through peasants. We're going to go right over. Uh, international law and customs. We're going to go through TSA. Interpol. Nobody's stopping us. Not today. Not today. There's three. There's eight. There's five. We're getting there. We're getting there. And then we're going to try and, and send troops back one more time. Do I have anybody up here? I do want to buy one more hero. Myra again. I keep seeing these heroes and I'm like, wait a second. Did I hire you once before? Did I hire you and then like something bad happened to you because I was careless? I feel like that happened. And, and I hope that they're kind to me and they're like, no. <clears throat> nope, I've just, uh, just been chilling. Just, uh, nope. Mm -mm. You know, one of those one of those times where they're trying to give me a kindness that I really don't deserve. Yeah, I was the reason why you departed in shame, and I'm sorry for it. Okay, so we're we're gonna head up here. Myra's heading down. I think that we got enough time for. Let's see, Halon needs to go this way. Flint, I think Flint has enough. Oh, do you think Myra will be able to catch him? I think she will. Yeah, because he's got the slowest troops. He's got... I don't know why he has halflings, but he does. And I'm actually going to have Kalindra come out to, like, here? So, Wilfrey's going to go as far as he can, which is going to be to right here. Just above the little... Mushroom fairy ring. And then that means that Sarah can, can kind of go into this area. Oh, should I land? It depends on what this fifth level spell is. If this is a great fifth level spell, we land. Four mirror image, I think we do land. And it's going to take a couple of... Yeah, I think we do land. We've got time. We've, we've got time. It's not going to be great for our bottom score, our final score in this ultimate campaign, but it'll be fine. I mean, have you ever known me to truly scratch and claw to try and get the highest possible score? No, this is this is an adventure map type of playthrough. I, I, I hope that people don't feel like I'm incredibly sweaty. When I play these, and when I say sweaty, I mean really, you know, trying to min-max the game. I've never wanted to min-max Heroes of Might and Magic. If I wanted to min-max a game, 
there are several other games I could play. I've I've got games where I've I've min maxed before, and I just don't enjoy it. I do not enjoy it. And I'd and I'd rather actually not regale you with with terrible stories about the time I've spent trying to play games that were competitive. Um, so the reason why I don't want to play competitive games at this point is because I've played competitive games competitively, and it sucks all the joy out of the game in the first place. It's not fun. It's not good. Not good for me, like my like my ugh, myself. And no disrespect to the people that do love that challenge. Because I know that, that you know, there's lots of people that do. And, and please, don't let me stop you. I just don't think that Heroes is the type of game that I want to play for that reason. It's really not. It's really not. I would probably go back to playing a game that I've got thousands of hours in. Like, like okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I've got, I've got, I've got way too much time. Probably, probably at least a thousand hours in League of Legends. Ugh. Ugh. And if you're hearing this, don't play it. It's not worth it. Not worth your time. Not worth the toxic community. Uh, not worth the diminishing returns of your brain power. Um, MOBAs were an interesting game. And I mean, I was there for Warcraft 3, and I was there for the rise of the custom maps. Not not very, very much, because I always had very, very slow internet. But I was there, and I remember when... I mean, I remember when Dota came out. Um, and, hey, interesting, exciting, fun, kind of a party game. You know, that was, that was the best part about the internet and gaming, was the ability to... Did we... Oh, we did. We picked up our spell. But that was the best part about online gaming was kind of spending time with your friends. But when a game with a ranked ladder starts to turn into just you playing by yourself in the dark at two in the morning, there's a problem. And that's not good. And just to be clear, if you're playing Heroes Might and Magic 2 at, at two in the morning, that feels different than having the ups and downs and the rise and fall of this game that is sucking your soul out of your heart because the point of the game is not to enjoy it, but to win. If if the point of your game is to simply win at all costs, I would exercise great caution. Because there are, there are unfortunately several games these days that are sickly. Truly sickly. Where you have, I'm sure, game companies and developers that have hired psychologists to figure out, okay, what is the science behind basic addiction and the human brain and pulling a lever so you can get something nice and shiny and keeping these gameplay loops in a way that you will remain invested for tons and tons of time. And then add on to that, that style, that type of gameplay that then has loot boxes or something associated with it. And then understand that at this point, investors for a lot of games don't want to invest in a game that doesn't have that tried and true method of making money, because why would you want to invest in a game that might fail? There's a lot of work that goes into making games addictive in all the worst ways. And thankfully, Heroes is not that game. Heroes is a game that, that you can enjoy and you can breathe and it's got a story and it's engaging in that way. It's not engaging because it's it's win or lose. And and you only enjoy it when you win. That's a terrible last secondary skill, by the way. Well, we'll take it. Uh, we will spend the gems for 6,200 experience. We'll take the logistics. That's worth it. Oh my gosh, it's the throng of genies. You know, it'd be really easy to do. You know, it'd be really easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> but and 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 so just to kind of wrap up that thought if you're going to be playing a game I would just I would just caution why are why am I playing it? Am I playing it just because I like the endorphin rush? Do I like the dopamine hit from winning? And that's the only reason why. 
Thankfully, again, Heroes is not that game for me, but that's why I try and stay away from playing Heroes competitively, uh, even though I, I am very competitive, because that is a step down the path of darkness. It's way melodramatic over the top, and yet that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I'm absolutely sticking to it. It's not worth the risk. Of, of finding yourself trapped in a, in a terrible gameplay loop like that again. It's not. Hmm. Fix Fox, you're just projecting. You're darn right I am. <laughs> Fix Fox, any other wisdom for you? Well, never pet a burning dog. That's, that's about the best I have. A throng of genies. Oh my goodness. I am more scared of a throng of genies than I am black dragons or green dragons or anything else like that. The ability to half a stack of creatures. This is terrifying. I would have done this whole army so much differently if I had known. Berserker might be important. Oh my gosh, this is terrifying. This is why, this is why it takes maybe six months to beat this fight we have to we have to try it and let's look at the losses and see how bad it is if we've obviously lost half of a stack of titans we're going to fight this fight ourselves we're going to accept these losses could we do better maybe could we do worse absolutely And we're going to take the luck just because that feels like a time where I can be grateful that I got lucky. Okay, remember, down to the left is nothing important. Let's go to the right. Let's let's do what's important first, and then we will come back and figure out if there's more we need to do. Uh, let's try and avoid losses where we can. Oh, no, we have two stack. We have to be careful with our phoenixes with our flame breath attack. Uh, well, they go first every time. Never mind. Not important. We might as well cast the Mass Bless. We have 90 spell points. I don't think it'll matter. We can kill four green dragons. Let's kill four green dragons. And then we can kill all... We can't kill all the red dragons? You are kidding me. Interesting. Well, let's kill what we can. We are not as strong as I would like. Three attack. The eight defense is great. But three attack is not going to go nearly as far as you would like. Not gonna lose a Titan though. That's not a concern. Uh, flame breathing ourselves though, that's concerning. Let's not do that. Okay. And that's that fight. I will pick up mines and stuff along the way. Probably not these magic gardens. I don't think that gems are really that big of a deal anymore. Even even one treasure chest for the boars is not that big of a deal. Throng of dragons. I'll take a throng of, of these dragons. That's not that's not bad. You liar! It's not that bad, he said. And then he proceeded to get absolutely dumpstered. Goodness gracious. Okay. We may get through this fight and then see. See what? We may see about... Going back and getting more troops. Because we're going to incur more losses... If we have less troops, best thing I can do is mirror image here. That will mitigate the damage from one whole stack of bone dragons. Thankfully, as a four speed creature, they all get to go last. Unfortunately, because they are undead, you can't blind them. You can slow them. A mass slow would be tremendous. We don't have it. Um, so actually, for that reason, should I slow them? Slowing... well... Let me think. So if we slow them, then it's gonna take them two, three, four turns to get across the battlefield? Okay. That's, that's gonna keep them occupied for longer than just the mirror image. If I do that, though, then there's a less chance that they're going to group up for a double hex flame breath attack, but that's not even likely anyway. Not not even not even a guarantee. I think that we take the slow. It's going to last forever. 
And we're going to put it right... Does it matter where we put it? We want it to be closer to the unicorns. Yeah, a mass low would have been the best thing for us. Wait a second. Oh yeah, did I, did I do that on purpose? Did I purposefully skip with the phoenixes? I must have. I must have purposefully skipped with the phoenixes. I don't remember doing that though. It makes sense. I probably would have done that just because I probably wouldn't have wanted to put them here and then have the dragons just collapse on them, but... But... I don't know. I don't know. I think that we try and make it so that bone dragons are probably going to slot right here, right? Because they're going, they're going to want to probably going to want to encumber the Titans. And then they're probably going to actually try and encumber both the greater Druids and the Arc Magi. If I go right here, they might slot here and here. Is that better or worse? I think that's worse. Let's go right here. So they'll slot right here and then here. No, that's not going to help. Make a decision. Okay, okay, fine. I'll just go right here. Whatever. I don't care about it. I'm just going to make a decision. Whatever. 11 bone dragons with the good luck. Aha. And the phoenixes are actually going to get a lot of attention there. So that's seven phoenixes down. That's a lot. Uh, slow is not going to help at this point. 34. 34. Still have 18 titans. 34. I think a mass blast is probably the thing. And then we'll focus on... Let's see. I want to be this way so that my flame breath attack, I'm less likely to hurt myself on accident. Ooh, that was nice. That was so nice, I'm almost wondering if I should get these bone dragons this way. Because I will for sure kill six, or I can kill seven. You know what, let's just for sure kill six. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to lose the damage on the unicorns a little bit, but we'll get some damage off this way and that'll be okay anyway. Seven bone dragons go down. Another three go down. We can't reach, but I just want to make sure I don't flame breath myself. Here. Then retaliation. One titan goes down, seven more bone dragons there. Uh, unfortunately, now I put myself in a position where the phoenixes can't attack without getting attacked. One, two... One, two, so I can't, well, I can, well, I can't go here without flame breathing myself. I'd have to go here. This is the only place I won't hurt myself, but then I'm opening myself up to that attack. I think we back off. Um, yeah, I think we back off here. We attack. Jeez, twice we got good luck with the Titans. Crazy good. Crazy good. And then we're going to mirror image. They're going to get to go. And then if we're able to kill all these bone dragons, great. These bone dragons are going to immediately go for that mirror image. Yeah, and so we attack here. These Titans just do this melee. And then these 36 bone dragons are going to be very, very much occupied by these 17 Titans. And we are going to... They're not going to even get here this turn. Skip. And then blast them to bits from afar. That slow actually was pretty critical. A mass slow would have been even better. But you know what? At this point, you're just splitting hairs. Three times this fight, our Titans got good luck. Three times. Amazing. Amazing. And, and the losses are, are stupendous. Stupendous. We're going to continue up this road just a little bit just to see what else is out there. But we're still going to keep in mind that we might have just avoided disaster here. Eight Phoenixes is still something, but we might have avoided disaster. I don't know how much we're going to need pathfinding. Is there a penalty for volcanic? I don't think that there is. So we're going to take the scouting, especially since we see a lot of all this green stuff around us. What's the green stuff called? Grass. Should I go and touch it? Probably. Expert logistics. Certainly. Let's do that. And then, oh... I don't care about windmills. Purple tent? Why am I going to need a purple tent? What? Oh, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. Don't tell me that I need to keep my phoenixes back. Because I don't. You know, at this point, I'm just going to hit Q and end the battle. All I had to do is just make sure that the, that the phoenixes didn't go and die. 
That was it. That was it. Aha! What's that? Oh! Oh, we wanted this a long time ago anyway. So that was totally worth it. We would not have wanted to leave and come back. We absolutely, we always wanted to get this town here. There's this Hut of the Magi. We will figure out what that is in just a second. But this is a castle, sure. But it's also an opportunity for us. Ah, swamp. We definitely should have taken the pathfinding. Oops, it's got to be upgraded all the way from the bottom. You again. So, here we go. And then I might as well pick up crystal mines and the likes. I don't think that there's any reason for me not to pick up Mandigal, because again, he's got the pathfinding. And so even though he's slow because of the slow halflings, it'll be just nice to have the secondary hero that can do some of this other stuff. Yep, yep, gold tent, teal tent. Interesting. Yeah, here's this town of Yorksford. Purple barrier, but we got to get there. And to get there, we got to go through the gold barrier. And the gold tent is probably up this way. Darn. <laughs> I was hoping I could avoid extra stuff. Maybe this is this is why this scenario takes six months. Or there's that time limit. It is pretty difficult, as I've spoken with Zents about. He made some excellent points. Zents from the F Heroes 2 team. He made some good points about map design. We were talking specifically about the scenario with Crazy Uncle Ivan. And discussing how if you have a time limit there, you want it to be meaningful. You want the time limit to actually matter. Otherwise, what's the point? And to do that is pretty tough. It's really pretty tough. Uh, if I have 50 spell points, which I will tomorrow, then we should be okay to fight this fight. Because otherwise, you, you know, the time limit isn't really a problem. And it need not be there in the first place. Or there's too much of a time crunch and the scenario is too difficult. You got to find that sweet spot of the time limit matters, but also you're not going to lose half your player base because I can't beat this one crazy section here. I don't think... I, I said with 50 spell points and that was mostly because dragons flame breath maybe a mirror image lots though lots 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 i don't know why i don't have another hero in the water to bring additional troops i think i can beat this fight and i feel like i just want to keep on going so i can get the liths because if i can get to If I can get to here, then I don't need to go by boat to resupply. Are these troops enough to get me to that point? I think that they might be if I can get through these black dragons. Let's fight this fight. We will for sure win. It's just, will we win well? Will it be worth the troops lost? That's the real question. And immediately I'm thinking to myself, probably not. If I mirror image right now, it's not going to do anything because... They're going to flame breath double attack because the AI is good like that. They're smart like that. Unless I mirror image a Phoenix. I could mirror image a Phoenix. Hmm. How about I do that? How about I mirror image a Phoenix? Because they're seven speeds, so they're going to get to go. We're going to take damage on the retaliation. Sure. But if we go here and then the other ones go here, then we won't lose the mirror image and that will soak up some attention. Okay, so that's bad. Don't do that. And then that's bad. Don't do that. Ah, so you have to attack. If you want to attack the same guy and not die to the retaliation, you have to attack here. And then that does open you up for a flame breath attack. Hmm, that feels bad. Uh, it's what I'm going to do, though. Because that's going to mean that... These dragons are going to have to figure out where they go otherwise. Okay, there they go. Okay, well. Darn. Let's kill one or two. We got two. Nice. 95. Yeah, you're only doing 95 damage to my titans. I don't want my druids to attack. Do not. Do not want them to attack. I just want to move right here. Oh. 
Well, but then my Arc Magi I get to do full damage. Yeah, that's that's a little bit of a that's a sorry choice there. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. Is it worth it to mirror? No, it's not. I think that we just want the mass bless at this point. Six, five. Let's kill five. And then I'm just going to plan on losing the one Titan. Maybe one more. Let's go here. And then the greater druids have already gotten hit once. And then we get to play this fun little mini game of make sure that you don't get flame breath attacked. It's a very fun little mini game. It's highly addictive. It's 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 got loot boxes and loot crates. It's from your favorite come on, it's from your favorite AAA publisher. Come on, we you know us. We've earned your trust. Come on, come on. Come on, just have a nice time. Buy the product. That was tremendous. Okay, I don't know if you noticed that, but the Phoenixes, we tried to attack over here, and there was one and one or something like that. We killed one of the Black Dragons. We did not kill the other Black Dragon. We did not kill the Black Dragon that was going to go before these five Black Dragons. So that was actually perfect. We wanted to kill the one we could. We wanted to do damage where we could, but we did not want to kill both Black Dragons. We did not. And now we take less damage from these Black Dragons here. Excellent. Wonderful. Stupendous. Magnanimous. Super califragilistic. Okay. So still some losses. Those 10 Phoenixes we lost was the mirror image. Otherwise, we could have avoided 13 greater druids. And the, the unicorns are doing their job. Losing unicorns is fine. They are doing their job. And even though I don't like these losses, and again, there's a part of me that really wants to try and, you know, go back and get some more stuff. I think that this is actually the best thing for me. Lots of Crusaders, lots of Green Dragons. If I can defeat them, then I should be able to take everything there. Where do these lists go? I think they go up into here. Well, let's find out. Can't possibly hurt to go find out now, can it? We already got this Heart of the Magi. Not necessary to get it again. We just have to remember to keep purchasing this town up. And hopefully we will have dragons starting by the beginning of month four. Uh, it'll it'll be the first week of month four. A throng of peasants? Uh, yeah, that's not going to stop me. I've never played the game Skyrim. But I've been told it's wonderful. And one of the things I think is funny is when people say, Oh yeah, it's just like when you have just defeated all these major dragons and then a bandit says, Ah, easy prey. And then you're like, Really? Me? Buddy? That's kind of how I feel like with those peasants. Those peasants were like, we will ambush you. And I was like, mm, will you though? Okay, so we can get through though. I think that we get through. We we don't, oh, we don't actually need to get through here. I thought that we did. I thought that we must go through here. Looks like we don't. We have tons of gems. We have tons of gems, tons of resources. Let's just save the troops for now. If we want to go back later, we sure can. Mandigal is way out of the way he needs to keep on going this direction we will pick up the swamp and then this other thing we need to get yeah we are going to we are going to get no we're not we need the maze we're going to be one day shy darn we did the very best we could okay and still, we have several heroes just kind of waiting around I don't think I need to defeat these titans I think I can just go this long way would you rather defeat a horde of titans or zounds of orc chiefs? No question. I will lose one phoenix. I'm fine with that. And all this so that way I can get this town quickly and then I can go back up this way. There's a lot of troops here, but we're doing okay. Lots of black dragons. I don't know how important it is going to be to get gold at this point. I don't think it's that useful. Um, should I get Maze or the Well? I think I actually get the Well. Minotaur's getting into my late game army. Not likely. The Swamp? Possible anyway. 
For that reason, for that point, I should probably have gotten the dungeon already for the extra 500 gold a day, but... Meh. I was, I was trying to get dragons and I just failed. That's all. Wouldn't it be wonderful if I had a thousand, two thousand centaurs I picked up across this map for the final fight? Wouldn't that be nifty? One phoenix, one unicorn. I think that's acceptable. I could, I could almost assuredly do better. I don't think I need to. I keep not moving forward with my other troops, my other heroes. Green tower. That was necessary. And then I'll figure out what other purchases I need to make here in that castle. We now have Yorksford as well. Can we upgrade this? Ooh, level four mage guild, elemental storm. This town may not be upgraded to a castle. I'm fine with that. That's perfectly fine. But yeah, the elemental storm, pretty nifty. This is a trap. Look at that. That is a trap. Hmm. But that could be a nice spell. And that's the thing is I don't know what it is and so I simply must. We defeated Zounds. No, Throng? A Throng? We're going to, we're going to defeat them again. Okay. Jeez. This is why I don't go to Las Vegas. Resurrect True. Oh, our fortunes have changed, and how great is it? We're going to hit V for View World, just so that way we can see if there's anything hidden in the tree line. Looks like there's not. So, we're going to go back. Jeez, do you want to test your luck against genies? Not really. Do you have any other choice? I mean, dragons, and I don't really need to go through the dragons, so I don't see why I should. If, if the alternative is, is hope for the best, cross your fingers, at least I'm going to have two chances for that to work out in my favor. One chance because that'll be the auto combat, and then the second chance will be me fighting the fight myself. Oh, they want to run? Do I want to pursue them? No. No. Do the Hydras want to get fought by me? Once again, we're going to hit skip and then hit the letter Q. So, spacebar Q. Enter. Terrific. Boars, don't care. Later on, I will say, oh, I should have picked all that up because I'll be out of gold. But for now, we are not worried about it. Sure, why not? View mines. Excellent. Okay. Evil Igor. What? Is this good Igor? Thankfully, we've actually got scouting here. Oh, no. Oh, no. There we go. Airy. Lots, lots, pack, few, horde. We can, we can probably beat that now. Especially if we pick up these troops, I think we can we can destroy this guy. Yeah, this is this is one. I mean, the horde is not terrific, but I'm I don't think we actually really need to worry about that too much. I think we head straight for these dragons, straight through the hydras. We'll pick up the gold tent. Gold tent takes you to gold tent goes to the gold barrier. Stone lifts go to here. I'm so confused. Oh, it's just so you can you can get your troops faster, marshaled quicker. I'll bet that that's a chain lightning there. In that, there's a artifact there. I'm guessing that that's a lightning type of spell. In that s spell scroll, I'm guessing. Hmm. Interesting that we could have absolutely finished this map earlier if we had just used our dimension door. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, man, we should have just dimension doored. Of course. Oh, what was I thinking? We've got Resurrect True. We're going to use it. We're going to be very cavalier with our phoenixes, knowing that we can uh, resurrect them, and we shall. Let's try and... Let's see, three to four. Yeah, let's kill three to four here. And really, the name of the game is going to be to avoid damage on these other stacks of creatures. I just don't want to have multiple stacks of creatures to try and resurrect true. I want these titans to get all of the smoke, as the kids say these days. All of the smoke. Because they can take it. They're tough. And the phoenixes are there. Let's see. We're going to attack this group here that 
has already used its retaliation. And then let's try and take out... Let's see. I guess we might as well do our Resurrect True now, just in case we need to cast two of them. I don't know how many hit points worth we can rise. I didn't actually check somehow. How did I check? How did I not check? 555? Yeah, so five Phoenixes at a time. If we really need to, we can always pull up one more Titan, but I think that we're not going to need that. The Unicorns are going to take a lot of damage, but it's going to kill like two Unicorns. No Unicorns. Never mind. Easy peasy. From here, the fight is won. No losses. Expert Pathfinding, though. No spell points. We need to get home so we can rest. Hydras are awed by the power of our forces. Do we wish to engage them? Yes, we do. It's free. It's free real estate. Free money. Traveler's Tent. That's been accomplished. Through here. Stone Liths. And we are... We are... I, I said this in the previous scenario. I said we are quickly having this map draw to a close and then we ended up being another 45 minutes. No, we're actually being quicker now. Uh, since we're actually home, we're almost there. Halfway there, living on a prayer. We're going to sit here overnight and then pretty soon in two more days. It's a new month. It's month four. I've still got dragons cooking there. We're going to send phoenixes, unicorns, and druids. And they're going to all converge on this location within the next three days. There's one emissary. Wow, there's a lot of halflings there. Here's another emissary. Hopefully there's no wolves in the way. Otherwise, they're going to find a very... Rude Awakening. They're going to think we are big, we are tough, we are strong, and they will find out that they are not. And we're going to go over here. Let's see. Oh, next turn will be fast. And then Mandigal, eh, he's just I'm just going to use him to make sure there's nothing else in here that I want. So, here. And sleep. Sleep. Go. Go. And then here. By the way, one of the worst things to ever happen to Heroes of Might and Magic as a series, I think. And this might draw the ire of some individuals. Heroes of Might and Magic 4. Where you were allowed to move units without having a hero attached to them. That was... That was just not good. And I understand if you're like, well, I really liked that. Okay, yeah, good. I'm glad you liked that. I think that that kind of gets rid of the challenge of doing some of these things logistically. Was it nice to have caravans where you didn't actually have to babysit a hero to go around and go to every single dwelling? Absolutely. Um... I'm with you on that, but I do think that there's a problem when you have heroes going along with troops and then you can split off one single vampire to go and pick up this pack of resources that you don't want to waste some of your movement points to go and get. The fact that you can do that just to simply save movement points feels bad and I don't like it. Uh, should we? Yeah, we should. Let's just go through here real quick. But with 31 Phoenixes and a couple of Titans and yada yada yada, I think we're doing just fine. I do. I'm going to actually have Mandigal go and break the Red Barrier. For this reason, uh, if Red is so darn tough that I don't want to deal with him, if he's out and about on the map, I can backdoor him. And then I can just go to where the artifact is, dig for it, and then we'll be fine. While waiting out a storm, a bolt of lightning strikes a nearby cottage's lightning rod, which melts and falls to the ground. The tip of the rod, however, survives intact and makes your hair stand on end when you touch it. Hmm. And I do want to see what this one is. Chain lightning. Ha, ah, what'd I tell you? But since that was one of the potential rewards we could have gotten, I feel vindicated by the fact that we did not have to actually pick that up. We will go get this gold tent. Where... Oh, it, it, it goes to right there. It'll be nice to have the flexibility, if nothing else. I will lose four unicorns. 
Don't care. Really don't. And then let's just see what Red does. Oh, I'll bet that he's actually stationary. I'll bet that he's stationary. Evil Igor, are you stationary? Are you going to move? Am I able to walk right by you? Hello? I'm going to wait and see what Evil Igor is going to do. Oh, there we go. Oh, you know what I bet? I'll bet that he is on a chain. I'll bet that he has a, a radius that he can patrol. I'll bet that's what it is. And I'm guessing, I'm really guessing that he actually does not want to fight us. I'll bet you that Karakston, though. Here, we're going to test this out a little bit because he only went that far. We're going to go right here. We're going to skip one more turn. We're going to defeat Aerie. We're going to go into his castle. Glorious victory. Wow, that was actually a lot of troops. I just kind of clicked right through it. He doesn't even have a green tower. What are you doing with yourself, man? Um, just because I'm interested, let's have Marini go here. Any other troops here? No, nothing else you haven't purchased. Let's just skip, 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 skip. And just see about evil Igor with Marini. Let's just see how tough he is. 45 green dragons, 15 black dragons, 25 red dragons. 99, call it 100, Mintar Kings. And really, what's going to matter here is not the creatures, it's going to be the stats. Easy peasy. Three attack, zero defense. I don't even care about the spell power, I don't care about the knowledge. I care about the attack and the defense. I do. I do. So, um, I'm going to... Death Ripple. Go out with a blaze of glory. <laughs> I didn't even kill. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that explains that. We are we are just kitty corner. I think it's right here. I'm going to see if he's going to attack me or not. I think I've got a big enough army. I don't think he wants any part of me. 15 black dragons, 45 green dragons, something something red dragons. I don't think he wants any part of me, actually. But if he does... He's going to run into a buzzsaw. The nine defense is going to carry me in that fight for sure. Not to mention 140 spell points with Resurrect True. I'll cast a Bless. I'll cast... Mm, I'll probably cast a Stone Skin first. Whatever. Let's just hit in turn and just see what happens. You know what I could do? If he doesn't attack me... He doesn't have a castle... He's just going to die. All right. Just in the interest of being thorough, we will defeat evil Igor. Okay, we will. But to be clear, I just have to dig and then I win the map here. Really? Let's just see what we can do. Huh. What do they say? Pride goeth before the fall? quite possible. I do think that the Resurrect True is going to do wonders for me. It's two, it's nearly two Titans at a time. Um, 17, 24 defense. Do I really need to do a stone skin? I think, I think that bless is just the way to go. We're going to mass bless. And then I will actually, I don't really care about the Minotaur Kings, although I'm going to put myself in harm's way. I'm going to try and kill as many of these green dragons as possible. They are the easiest to kill. And the stat difference wise between black and green dragons is not that big of a deal. The Minotaur Kings, they're going to tickle. 19 defense, 12 attack. They're probably going to kill three Phoenixes. Maybe more. 24 down to... They killed four. The curse is a great curse. It's really a great curse. It's really smart. I'm not mad about it. Focusing on the green dragons first. You want the greater druids? Why do you want the greater druids? That's news to me. We're going to move the greater druids to where they can retaliate and kill this one Minotaur King next time. I guess this time it doesn't matter, but next time it will matter. Will matter. Again, we continue to work on these greater druids, or these green dragons, excuse me. Mm, let's go here. And then... Oh my gosh. We started with 25 Titans, did we not? How many do we have now? 24? I think we're okay. Uh, we are down half of our stack of Phoenixes, though. Let me just resurrect true these ones. Um, and then we'll do that in one sec. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then let's just continue... 
Wait. It's a new round of combat. Wait, where did my spells go? What spell did I just cast? Oh, I did I did raise five phoenixes. I lost track of that for a second. I needed to um, attend to something just off screen. But just on screen, that's where the fight is currently at this point. I don't care. I'm going to have the dragons attack themselves as much as possible. I suppose we will use the greater druids to great effect here. And again, I'm focusing on the green dragons instead of the black dragons. Why? 200 hit points, 300 hit points, 25 to 50 damage, 25 to 50 damage, 15 attack versus 17 attack. That extra 30% bonus damage is not going to really matter because it's not really bonus damage at this point. So I don't really care. We will probably I'm just going to continue to resurrect true. I don't see any reason why I ought not to. I could, I probably should have resurrected Titans there because I, I have plenty to resurrect, but it's fine. It's fine. It'll be okay. Still, we continue. Still, we slog through this. Uh, we will kill here and here and here. And we will start to resurrect true. The big guys with the most defense, 24 defense. Uh, this is not going to hurt our Titans. Ooh, good luck with 12 Phoenixes. Not bad. Not bad. There's only five Minotaur Kings there. We've eliminated the Minotaur Kings. There's still 20 Titans left. I think we should do this here and here. You know what? I'm just going to hit auto combat. We're just going to watch this out because from here, I, I don't think there's any possible way I'll lose with 19 Titans. I don't think you need a single other spell, to be honest. Those curses are like annoying. I'm wondering if there was a better spell that the Warlock had in his back pocket, but we just aren't seeing it because it makes the most sense to get rid of the Bless. I don't know, but that's that's one thing I'm theorizing. So folks, that's that's 24,000 experience. There's no good artifacts there, but red player has been vanquished. We need to go here. We need to hit end turn. We need to hit D for dig. Congratulations. After spending many hours digging here, you have uncovered the sphere of negation. This sphere will negate spellcasting from both sides in combat. You know what that means? That means that we get a barbarian or we get a knight, probably a barbarian in the upcoming scenario. We do not have a wizard or a warlock or a sorceress or necromancer as our primary hero. We have a might based hero and that's going to be fantastic. That's why this was a not necessary deviation, but we have made this folks. Our victory is secured. We have found the sphere of negation. Our quest is completed. That means that we will be on to the final scenario. Fount of Wizardry, we do have the Sphere of Negation as one of our awards. We will have to pick up with that next time. But until that time, folks, my name is FixFox. Thank you so much for all the support. Thanks for being there. I appreciate you very much. And we will catch you in the next one. Look after you. Look after your family. Look after your friends. FixFox out. <laughs>